Some of the content of Patriots Unfiltered may not be suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. The world's original podcast. Welcome to Patriots Unfiltered. Patriots Initially, when I said to Alex, it was going to be Pee Pee and the Deuce, and she's like, I need a poop name. All of Paul's son's friends are commenting. It was great for engagement because they were all like, Mr. P, Mr. Perlo, <laughs> oh my P, God. Mr. P, Mr. P. Mr. P is the Rizzler. Oh, my Rizz level was up. up. My fit was tight, the drip, I, I did. The <laughs> Rizz level was very high. Do you like girls in Crocs? Uh, <laughs> I don't know why that sounded exceptionally creepy, but it did. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a God-given talent. I'm curious if any of you saw Paul's Twitter fight with Seth Davis. <laughs> I found myself on the couch. <laughs> However, they crossed the line when they accused him of openly rooting for the team. As a Perillo disciple, I jumped in with proof of Paul not being a homer and defended Paul's honor. I was just hoping some of you got the same enjoyment. Seth Davis gets under my skin like I don't think anybody else does on Twitter. Touch, touch grass. Touch grass. Touch grass. Touch grass. I'm going to throw that in with yeah. my wrist. There you go. <laughs> Evan's live reaction to the Cole Strange draft pick. Uh, if you guys haven't heard it, it's it's it's, it's hilarious. Time. I don't know what to say. This is Patriots Unfiltered. Presented by Toyota's official website for deals, buyatoyota.com. All right, welcome to Patriots Unfiltered. It is Tuesday here at Gillette Stadium, and we are officially in the month of April. And you know what that means. We're that much closer to the draft. 22 days. Yeah, I'm get, 23 days. I, I'm genuinely excited about this. Yeah. Yeah. I really am. As you should be. I'm yeah, excited because it's all going to happen fast, you know? Like, there's not going to be a lot of, like, sitting around waiting to see who falls to you. You're going to know in, like, like the first half hour what's going down. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Third overall pick, right to it. But then you got to sit around and be like, they and could we can trade eat. back in. Well, <laughs> we get they could. Outs. I mean, that, that – top of the second round pick is is valuable yeah you know well that's when you get to like you know 11 11 30 at night it's, it feels like the night's kind of wrapping down people are leaving and all of a sudden you know there's always seems like somebody trades back in patriots are back on the clock and then it's like go time again all of a sudden out of nowhere so yeah. they'll be ready for that so it's deuce it's evan it's paul it's me it's jules and matt in the booth and uh we're talking patriots for the next two hours and anything else that's going on so that brings me to the next question what's going on <laughs> Oh, I think we're getting into silly season. We, we were recording a segment for Draft Countdown before this, and that's, you know, this is the part where p things start to come out that just like, what, really? With, uh, you know, the report yesterday that Elliot Wolf is uh, is into J.J. McCarthy. So, you know, it's one of those things where you're like, really, maybe, I don't know. Well, that's been going on for a couple weeks now, that the Patriots have interest in J.J. McCarthy. Now, I don't know who started that. I know we have some Michigan people that work up in admin. Maybe they started <laughs> it. Um, but I, I blame Zoe. I mean— Let's just say, should they have interest in J.J. McCarthy? No. Wow. Should they? Well, yeah. Wow, that was in incredibly in, harsh. In the interest of no stone unturned, yes. Yeah. I, I, I think that they should have interest in all the quarterbacks, and they should be doing the homework on all the quarterbacks, which is why I'm so surprised that they don't seem to want to touch Michael Penix with a 10-foot pole. I don't know if that's – Well, don't, don't judge by what they're doing because, you know, they – Let's just say this is the other thing that just drives me crazy about like people reading into not just what the pages, but any team. Let's just say that you Michael Penix has a lot of tape. He's been playing a lot of football for a while, right? Yep. What else do you need to know? Well, you do. So why would don't you, you want to know the guy? Like, no, no, no. But that doesn't he could be coming here at some point just because yeah. you didn't go to his pro day doesn't mean he's not coming here. You right. Know, so, like, don't read into all that stuff. Don't fall into the trap. So it was. It just was reported yesterday or the day before that, probably yesterday, uh, his list of thirty visits that he's had scheduled so far, and the Patriots aren't on the list. Okay. Well, then, so then they don't have interest. No, but, okay. no <laughs> I, it's one or the other. Either yeah, they right. they love him and they don't want anybody to know, right? Or they have zero interest and he's off the board because yeah. of injuries or whatever. Right. So can I just like take a you know a kind of a logical a way outside look? If the Patriots loved Michael Penix, why would the need for a smokescreen? Maybe they want him to last a 30. No, I'm not saying it's a smokescreen. <laughs> I'm just saying we've got what we need on him. We don't need to do any more. No, no, but but a lot of people are you know sort of talking about like what Evan just said. Like you know, so either they really like him or they have no interest in him because they haven't really done any real research. I agree with you. Like you can figure out. I, to me, I think they would have been more of a presence at the pro day if they had a lot of interest in them. But I just don't understand, 
and not Evan didn't say this. Evan's t- sort of talking to the people that are trying to like, what does it mean? What does it mean? Like, right. I, I just can't imagine what, like, why do you have to downplay him when you have the third pick? Yeah. And if you want him to last to 34, there's a lot of teams that need quarterbacks. Yeah. In that teens area, like, it's kind of a stretch to I, think like yeah. well, the Patriots are going to wait and they they don't want anyone to take them. They're going to take them at like, the top of the second. Like, d- d- does that make sense to people? It's like, the closest I'm going to set up. A, I'm going to send up, set up a smoke screen so people don't think I'm interested in at, at 34. Well, yeah. or maybe it's a trade down with the Vikings and you have 11 and 23 and one of those two picks turns into Michael Penix. I I, I don't know. Sure. I just in years past Belichick has done this where the guy they end up I, the one that I always re- will remember is Nate Solder who was as shocked as anybody that they uh, that the Patriots were on the other side of the phone when he got, got the call in the first round. This this happens sometimes where got, teams are just so standoffish with the prospect that it but, may, but, but even that, I don't think it was a smoke screen. No, Solder. and Solder actually told us. And right. You remember, because he came into the studio, and I remember talking to him right outside the studio, right. and he said he, he came away from the meeting with them. He didn't think that they loved him. Yeah, he didn't think that was going to be one of the teams. You're right. You yeah. remember it right, Evan. He didn't think it was one of the teams, but they did meet with him. Oh yeah, and they talked to him, and they and sent stuff. Dante out. Like, yeah, you know, a couple days and Dante's before the, the draft. one that said that was you know, pardon the pun, sold on him. Yeah, and yeah. I th- I think according nice. to Dante, it, w- it wasn't like they were trying to hide it. It was just somebody like, hey, we should check this guy out, and Bill said, all right, go go look at him. Yeah, and but, Dante came <clears throat> back and he was like, we need to take this. It guy. is one of those things though with th- all these reports. You can make it mean anything you yeah. want, and you're not wrong or right. Yeah. Just just for comparison's sake, though, Evan, at the two pro days, it was was it pretty much like AVP, Mayo, McAdoo, yep, TC McCartney. I mean, the whole there was the whole eight brigade, people right? that were the same but, eight people at both but, pro days. But, but there but was he, nine total, but they Cam Williams went to Washington for their pro day and. Uh, I can't remember remember the other scout's name. Uh, I'll look it up in a second. He switched places with Cam Williams yeah. and came in for the UNC but, Pro Day. And not to say that it's a smokescreen, but let's just say that, you know, again, you have all the tape you need on Michael Penix. You didn't go to his Pro Day. He's not on your – he's not one of your 30 visits. That doesn't mean you still can't go out there and visit with him one-on-one, right? Sure. That, the biggest thing to me is just – it's not about watching his pro day. It's about getting to know the kid. That's what I mean. You, you can, know, you can taking go him out to and dinner and getting to know him a little can, bit. You can still do that even if he's not coming here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah, he just would have, would have thought that the convenient time to do that is when he's there. Yeah. For but, his pro day. But, you know, like, yeah, but they could meet with But him then anywhere. you have to share time with other teams. You can go out and schedule your own, have spend a day with them. You know, yeah, I was listening to the Move the Sticks podcast, and Daniel Jeremiah told a story about when he took a prospect out for dinner uh, the night before his pro day, and he said, you know, order whatever you want, like we're paying, uh-huh. order, order whatever you want, and the the player didn't want to order anything, yeah, yeah. and Daniel Jeremiah's like, are you not hungry? Like, what's going on here? He's like, no, I have two more of these <laughs> after this, uh, so, so I'm, pace I'm, I'm pacing myself for the next meal. So he's like, yeah, so I just sat there by myself and ate a steak all by myself at the table, <laughs> and this kid just sat there, and we just. You know, I just fired off questions and he answered. Just uh, water yeah. and you, bread. You know when they go to the pro days and they have separate meetings, like not they don't meet with everybody that goes to the pro day. No, I know. Like you have a sep- you, on your own. No, but if you go, if you go to the LSU pro day, there's good, you get your time with Daniels, but the other teams are going to spend time with well, him too. There, they came out to see him. Right, but, but everybody's going to do. But you know, like you understand, like it doesn't matter when you do it. You're not sharing time. You're getting a time by yourself. You're getting a time by yourself, but you don't have all day. You have whatever amount you want. No, you don't have any amount you want because other teams need so, to see them on that day as well. So, okay. So then you can set, schedule another time, like the next day. Exactly. Like, this is what I'm saying. That, that's what I just said. No, you would think that it would be convenient when he's at Washington and you are there to watch him. You can you go, get it all done at once. They, they have, is all I'm saying. They have these things called airplanes now. It's, you can get anywhere you want, like like within quick. hours. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't understand why you wouldn't just do it when you know he's there. Because why are you setting up separate like this whole because like I, oh cuz someone else is there like No, it's that just That ain't why they weren't wanted, there. Maybe you want to spend more time than what's available on that day or weekend. Then do what you did with May and Daniels cuz evidently they had separate meetings with them. Yeah. I yeah. I'm sure they did, but I'm just saying maybe maybe I'm just saying every guy is different. You know, just like Nate Solder. And you never know you know, you can't tell anything right now in terms of what the 
I'm telling the Patriots don't know who they're going to pick right now at well, three. That's, they know who that's they, troubling as all hell. They, they know who they want to pick, but what what if Daniels? You know, what if they don't like Daniels and all of a sudden May goes second and yeah. now. Yeah, you know, like, my my well, biggest my, my biggest takeaway trying to read Scary. read the room at these pro days was just watching at both days the Commanders brass and the Patriots brass stand directly front and center behind the quarterback as he was doing his throwing session and it was almost like everybody else was like, well these two guys are one of, you know, they're going to these two teams like why, right. why even bother, you know, trying to get a good seat for this because right. and then at the end of it, Mac Brown took a picture with Gerard Mayo and uh, Dan Quinn to just being like, my guy's going to play for one of you two. So right. let's take a picture for it just felt like, you know, there was no Giants contingent. There was no Minnesota contingent. There wasn't anybody else that was really thinking we have any shot. Right. Of so drafting like, I these think the guys. Patriots like they feel that way. Like Washington's taking one of two guys. So we're going to have the option for one of two quarterbacks and they have to know. If it's A quarterback, then we're going to take him. If it's B quarterback and they don't like him, then yeah. here's the contingency plan. It's Marvin Harrison. It's Joe Walt. It's whoever. It's or trade it's down. trade down. Right. Whatever the, the cases may be. But i got to think that they they know. Oh yeah. Now, um, now I, Kelly, hope, I hope they know. Should now, be a number of Kelly like kinda three, four guys. Can I ask that? I wanted to ask you about that. Go ahead, Fred. Yeah, Kelly, the coach, you know, Daniel's coach at LSU, kind of slipped Brian out Kelly. and kind of intimated that the commanders are going to take his guy. Yeah, I like, like it. What do you think? Did about he that? just mess up? Do you or? think he screwed up? I, yeah. I, I mean, my no, my initial thing was just that he was um, acknowledging that Caleb Williams was going to go first, but that his guy was the second best guy, and, and that 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 he, was how he, I like, read that was kind of how I took it. Okay, okay. All right. you know? that's interesting. I hadn't heard yeah. that theory. No. That's how, that was that, that was my interior theory. Um, I thought that's kind of how, and that's I what I wanted well. to hear too. So, I I go, you know, as you guys know, I go to deep places. Beep, 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 beep. I thought it sounded funny. Yeah. I thought the Washington part sounded different than the rest of the audio. Did he say it with a southern oh. accent or was it? No, he like no, said it, it like, oh, crap, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> what, maybe that's He's going what it was. going third it overall. Just, it kind of sounded funny to me like the, the audio could have possibly been doctored in some way. <laughs> Ooh. But I haven't heard anybody because it, it hasn't really been a huge thing. No. No. I heard it kind of like in passing. It's like, oh, you know, he, yeah. he thinks – he certainly thinks the commanders are going to yeah. take him. Someone I, told me that that happened with Stroud last year. And it was wrong. It was Carolina. Someone oh. had talked. Uh, I don't know if it was um, Ryan Day or someone in Ohio State talked about that. And you know that's you know in Carolina we got a good yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So so and then you know I don't know if this is a continuation of my rant last week, but you know we're still hearing all the media people complaining because. Gerard Mayo's all over the place. He's not giving us, you know, he's not answering. He's all over. You know, you don't know if they're picking third or trading down. Good. Like, why do they expect Gerard Mayo to just tell them what we're doing? Like, <laughs> he's I don't, the king of doing this to me. I don't know where these come from. Like, oh, yeah, you I haven't. Know. Oh, my God. It's like, he, Gerard, he's all over the place. It's word salad. It's. A, I've heard word salad. I haven't heard yeah. he's not telling us yeah. what they're doing. Well, that's yeah. what they Those mean. are two different things. That's what, you know, it's like. He talks a lot. You know. But I, mean, and, but he, I don't I, think people he, are looking at He talks a lot, and he doesn't tell us anything. Bro, why are you, not telling, us the, why are you not telling us who they're going to take with the third pick? Right. No one talked more than no. without saying anything than Bill. Of course. Oh, and that's like you Bill Parcell. Oh, they all do that. You work in NFL media, you better get used to word yeah. salad because you're going to be eating it just about every day. I, mean, I don't think people are wondering why Gerard Mayo won't tell them what they're taking with the third pick. But that's me. You know, he said he was going to be – what did he say at the uh, owner's meeting? I'm going to be cons- – uh, crystallize our plans or something like that. I forget the word he used. Yeah. He did he didn't do anything like that. He didn't crystallize the plans. Of course he's not going to he's not going to tell you what their plans are. Well, why are we surprised at that? No, I mean, I, I think I I think I've been there for just about everything he said this off season and I think he's, you know, doing a good job of just like I don't know, like you know, we, I mean, he's he touches on the hits, but he doesn't con, you know, even, you know, even, you know what they need, but even on that first day when he was announced to the media and he said, we're going to take, uh, in a, you know, uh, the best player at a very important position. And everyone, you know, said quarterback. And I can understand that. But wide receiver is an important position. Tight ends. I mean, uh, left tackle is an important position. So, like, yeah, he's, relax. He's giving you enough to kind of have some fun with. But but you're not going to pin him down. And that's to be expected. The, the more that I hear from him, though, at the owners' meetings especially, his eyes are, are widening to trading down a little bit, I think. Just because I th- well, the owner said it too. I just think that they feel like it's 
it's going to be a long process that they can't just drop a quarterback in here and flip a switch. And I think, you know, looking at a team like the Texans, it took them a couple of years before they drafted the court. They had two full draft classes before they drafted CJ Stroud in Houston. And I, I just, that's, that's the only thing that I took away from any of his comments right. recently was him saying the thing about the more picks that you have, the better off you are and that sort of stuff. Well, you know, the thing we have no idea about is, if they do trade down, is there a quarterback consolation prize that they'd be happy with? That He's, either you take, he, and that's the other thing that he said. Yeah. He said there's five or six quarterbacks in right. this class, so we know the four, and I assume you know Penix and Nix are the five and six. Maybe, it, yeah. I, I do. I, do I think that Bo Nix is? The most exciting prospect? No, he's kind of he's kind of vanilla. Like his. But are we surprised boring. though that JJ McCarthy is Maybe. now four? Like he's up there now. Like no, that wasn't the way it was three months ago or two months ago. I'm not surprised. I mean, that's kind of how it goes. I think with especially think, with a player who won the national championship and you know had a great season and and I just think as people, you know, I mean, it's the it's the unknown. That's what everyone's kind of drilling down right. on. I think I'd feel fine with him in, in the mid first round. And, and like that's I did the with thing. Mack, in but. defense of McCarthy, it's not like he's shown he can't do things. He's just hasn't done them right uh, to an, a large extent. And I just don't like. I, and I know I'm on an island on this. I don't see him as an unknown. I, I actually think that he's one of the safer picks out of all these guys because you know that he can play as a sidecar. Like he can he can do just enough on. Big game situations, you know, he was really, really good on third down. When he had some opportunities to play close games in the fourth quarter, he was pretty good in those situations. That's why I keep going back to Brock Purdy as the comparison because I think that he's got what some – What about Mac Jones? I think he's more talented than Mac, like but physically talented. But you think talented. that Brock Purdy stinks? Yeah, and I think J.J. McCarthy is, oh, okay. is pretty right. average too. That, that, that didn't go the way I thought it was. I, <laughs> I don't think that Brock Purdy stinks, and some of it's like performative on my part with Purdy, but I think that he is – a system quarterback. I think that he is a guy that you plug him in and he's able to make some of the plays that allow that the offense is allowing him to make. And I think JJ McCarthy is the same way. I think if you put JJ McCarthy on Minnesota next year and he has Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison and a good play caller and Kevin O'Connell, I think he would be fine. I, I, the difference between everybody else and with me and McCarthy is I don't necessarily see his ceiling as like, oh, he's this ball of clay that in three years he's going to be this incredible quarterback. I actually see him as like, I can win what a national he, championship what he, with this what guy. What has he done to prove that to be true for you? Like he's his ceiling isn't that high. I just don't think that he has great post-snap decision-making and accuracy. I, I think that he the accuracy when you watch him, you know, some of the throws that he made at the combine where he's airmailing deep outs, like ten, that's all over his film at Michigan. That's not just like an issue that you saw at the combine. I think that some of the times, you know, he throws the ball into team meetings just for no reason. And he has some bad decisions post snap uh, with the football. I don't think that those things are everybody. Just but isn't that, that Drake can, may too. Yeah. But Drake may does it like as a playmaker. Like I think JJ McCarthy is doing it in structure. Like JJ, like Drake may is a lot like Josh Allen where like, you're going to have some of those like, yeah, no, no. Yes. Type of throws. Yeah. I don't think J.J. McCarthy has those types of physical tools. Okay. I, I think he's an instructor. I don't want to use the word game manager because I think that that's a little cruel, but just a, a Brock Purdy type that, yeah, he Brock Purdy brought his team to the Super Bowl. You know, like that's that's not an easy feat. And I think that J.J. McCarthy could do the same. I just don't look at J.J. McCarthy as the guy that you draft, and now all of a sudden your team is is a contender. You know, like I don't think that he's going to be the reason why you're winning games. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm just – Jaden Daniels? Yeah, I think Jaden Daniels could because of his running ability. Okay. But that's why I feel like I'm kind of out on a lot of these guys except for Drake May right now. And I just – I think that this team needs to shoot for the stars with the quarterback position. And, All you know, right. And it's so, like, so give uh, – go for Caleb Williams. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I mean, I think he's he's a ride. Yeah. He's a ride. I mean, I think he's going to – he's either going to – I know that a lot of people think he will be. He's not going to be available. If you trade, if you are willing to give up a king's ransom, not no, I, not if I'm so. Chicago. <laughs> yeah, I, I I wouldn't be willing to do that. But I just I just wonder if you miss on May, do you really have to take the obligatory Spencer Rattler? You know, later like it's I don't, it's just the, get guys that you think have ceilings. I'm so sick of just talking about guys. Well, he's got a, a low floor and he's going to be okay. High floor, like high floor, like. <laughs> He's got a low floor, I thought. <laughs> so, <laughs> low floor, that's so, Jones. So if you're Chicago and someone wants to give you a Mike Ditka deal, 
You, you don't no settle chance. for the third quarter for selection three no, and no take a, a boatload of picks? I wouldn't. I mean, you're just talking about a, a Mike Ditka thing? Yeah. So you get you, you trade your draft for him? Yeah. No. Great. I have two sixth and seventh round pick? No. Okay. Not if I believe in the quarterback. Now, you want to, like, okay. get silly no, it's in, fine. like, a Herschel Walker kind of trade, you know, where I'm getting multiple first round picks for years to come? Maybe I think about that, but I probably wouldn't, and I don't think Chicago would because I don't think they would have traded Justin Fields right. if they had indecision. Yeah. Well, I maybe think, I think they sort of know what they want to do, and that they're, they're – convinced that he's the guy to do it maybe they also like Jaden daniels or drake may but you know i don't know i don't know i i wouldn't do it either just for the record but like i don't rule anything out no I it's just you, you kind of have to pick what you want to what you don't want to get this year and i mean you of course you can take late round shots on guys but you know i i like i said with minnesota's picks it seems like wow if you had those two picks and you weren't worried about a quarterback you could hit it out of the park with a tackle and a receiver that are exactly what the Patriots kind of need. So right now I'm of the mind of, and I'm kind of like souring a little bit on Jaden Daniels. Like I'm like, if May's there, take him. If not, trade down, try to fill those other needs. And like, honestly, I'm almost at a point now where I'd rather just roll with Jacoby Brissett for a season than have to like, well, Sp Spencer Rattler's waiting in the wings behind, you know, like, like that kind of conversation, which just feels forced. Don't force it, you know, put the pieces in place. And when you have a first round pick, take a swing on a big time talented so guy that if what it if, hits, you're going to be great. What if it goes... Unlike what we think, because we all kind of think it's going to be Daniels at two, right? And and it'll be May. But what if it goes the other way? What if May goes two? That's what I'm. That's what I mean. That's and why you, I'm almost to the point right now. Like I mean, I, I think a couple you, weeks ago I was saying just take which one's there, and I don't know. I'm just I'm worried about Daniels. I'm worried about Daniels because of that I'm picture of his elbow. Exactly, just because of that. No, I I, I mean I, I like them both. <laughs> I like May more, but I like them both, and I've sort of been talked into a little bit more with Daniels. But I don't understand like. So you're saying, like, you don't want to do it with Daniels, which I'm not saying I don't understand why you don't like Daniels because I, I, I get that. No, I do still like but, him, but I just – So, you know, like, you don't want to be locked into this Spencer, Spencer Rattler thing. Like, well, if you don't take someone at three, you're locked into one of those. Yeah, right. And I don't really like any of those. And right. So it's hard. It's I th hard. I think Bo Nix is fine. Uh, maybe in the – a little bit higher than a Spencer Rattler, like a little bit more potential than that. But, you know, he's – at best, an Alex Smith, you know, maybe a Baker Mayfield, if you really want to get. And the other guys that you could it. take at that spot, maybe in the late first, early yeah. second, like I you would pretty much could that. lock I, a guy down. I like you know, you. we're, we're going to plug a guy in there, and instead of rolling the dice on Bo Nix, and you know, then we're going to spend the next you know first three months of the season talking about Bo Nix being behind Jacoby Brissett, and you know what what's going on behind the scenes, and when's Bo going to get his chance? And <laughs> Mike and Tony, know. he obviously blows Mike. <laughs> he, he can't, can't get even beat out Brissett. Well, right. I, I would say if you draft a guy like Bo Nix, then I think he'll play early because he's twenty four already. Right. He's been that, in college so, for six so years. You go. That's another so point. To those. Like, he's 24. He's about to turn 30. It's not, it's not even bench. about like, well, you got to get him on the field because he's getting old. It's yeah. more just like he's probably ready. Right. At that age, you know, he's played. Well, he's as close football. to being what he's going to be as, as he is. That's at the 24, biggest thing. And that's that what I, Daniel's a little yeah. bit too. And that's the biggest thing I think that's changed my mind about it all is when you really think about it, what would Drake May be in two or three years? If he stayed in college football for another two or three years, like these guys, and did. then played with two point. first round or, picks, or JJ McCarthy, like to, I, to give him credit too, you know he's also 20, 21 years old. These other guys, like you have to think that Daniels and Knicks, Penix, like those guys are at their, they're coming up to their ceilings. Like I, I don't think physically they're going to get much bigger, stronger, faster at 24, 25 years old than they already are. Like I know we always go back to Brady, but it's it's one of one. Like yeah. Brady reinvented himself. That's not easy to do. You know, I think these uh, most of these guys are are what they are by that point of their life. And you were w and you were watching them play last season with all that experience, like at the height of their powers as far as college football. So I mean, that's you know, it's I, I, I you get, get him point. into the pro program. The program, you know. I think Daniels, Daniels, I yeah. I know there's a lot of questions about his his frame and like he's slight. You know, he's 210 pounds, but w looking at him a little bit up close, I thought that. He, he looks like an athlete, though. Like, it's not like he's Taekwondo Thornton where he's got, you know, skin and bones. Like, he looks like... Oh, he's been working uh, out. He uh, did the bench yeah, press. Please. And it's, we'll it's see. It's really adding. Uh, he, looks like, up. he looks like an athlete. You know, maybe more like an NBA player than a football player. But, like, there's, there's an athletic frame there. It's, I don't think that he's quite as fragile just because of his, he weighs a certain amount than I thought initially. The thing I kind of feel like is hard with him that just is in the back of my mind is, and I mean this like to respect Lamar Jackson, who's really, he's always had that amazing running ability, but he's, you know, been able to kind of settle into an offense. And 
I think it's it's just hard for those kind of players to not go to the well, you know, like, and it's, it's if it's not going right, you're like, screw it, I'm just running. And, you know, when you have that kind of to fall back on, can you ever, you know, and that Lamar has, but can another player do it? And that's, I mean, that's you know, been Justin Fields' problem. I think when he's at his best, he's saying, screw it, it's not there, I'm just going to run. Yeah. But he yeah. hasn't proven that he can do it the conventional way. Yeah. yeah. I think the one thing you can give Jaden Daniels over Lamar as a prospect is I think Jaden Daniels is a little bit further along with his mechanics and his throwing ability than, than Lamar. Lamar had some issues, you know, yeah. coming out in terms yeah. of. He as, definitely throws it better than Lamar. Yeah. Jones. You know, Lamar had, had footwork issues. His release was funky. He's kind of had that shot put type of release that, that yeah. they had to fix, you know, so. Jaden Daniels throws a really smooth, fluid throwing motion. You okay. know, it really snaps. So let me ask Lamar Latrell. Let, let's just say you know you've got McCarthy as the fourth. Who, who's the fifth? Penix. Penix well, probably. All right. Yeah. So those top five guys, are they all better than what Tua was coming out of college? All of them? Yeah. No. Okay. No. Where do, where do you draw the line? Like who was Tua better than of the top five? All of them except Caleb Williams. Uh, then then we're we're <laughs> what are we doing? Fred's giving up. I mean, Tua, I, I, Tua, was Tua, Tua was fine. No, 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 but no. He's but you're a, you're looking at Tua as as in what he's become on the Miami Dolphins. Tua, when he was enter in the draft, was a, a fantastic prospect, like one of the best of this no, last but, decade. But what we know of him now, he was forget about what prospect. He but that's was. a different conversation. No, I'm just saying, like what he. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, like not, what, not what he was envisioned so, as. So you're saying what he became? What in he the NFL. became? Like. Yeah. What, well, it's, but how can you right. say what these guys are going to become in the NFL? No, you don't know. But I'm just saying, like, what you think now, like, what he, Tua is, can these guys be as good as he was or is Tua better than these guys? Um, I think that all three of the guys that we talk about at the top have, have the potential to be better than Tua in the NFL. You know, Tua, what he became, you know, Tua had the hip okay. injury. No, that, and that, that's, I, that's what I want to get to. Yeah, like, I personally know. would be thrilled if the guy they took turns out to be Tua. I, I mean, I guess I'm on an island. No, I'm with Paul on that. I'd be very happy. I mean, would it be a home run, like best ever? No, but I'd be very happy if he turns out to be a league-leading passer. Can he be a league-leading <laughs> passer without Waddle and Hill and all that, you know? I don't know. Ne I've never seen him play without well, that, he, so I don't you know. you did see him play without that. And he was really good. From the day he stepped he was into the really NFL, good? He's, he's won games since he's been in the league. Uh, I don't know. But you want me to look it up for you? No, we haven't beaten him yet. Well, we haven't. Well, I he mean, won games. That doesn't mean that he was the reason that they won. Yeah, I mean, but obviously, when the day he's, he's better today than the day he first threw a pass. Agreed. Just like Joe Burrow is better today than when he first came in the okay. league. But I saw Joe Burrow play without Jamar Chase. He was good. Yeah. Because you know, like, I, I, Tua went what? what? He was drafted. Fifth. He was fifth. Fifth overall. Yeah. Fifth overall. But in terms of quarterbacks, second, second he was Burrow. the second quarterback if behind he doesn't, Burrow. Yeah. But if he doesn't get hurt, he doesn't yeah. have the hip He'd injury. He'd have been the one overall right. pick. He probably would have been oh, the number so? one overall pick. Yeah. Yeah. He I was, mean, he, he was going into that season for sure, and then he got hurt. Yeah. So That's fair. Yeah. Now, yeah. where I, I would say, and I agree with everything Evan said about the prospect thing, the thing, that was the game changer for him. Is I thought he was a generational talent with everything. Clearly, he's either A, lost some mobility in athleticism, or B, been told you can't play like that at this level. Yeah. Because now he's just really a pocket passer. Yep. Yeah. With some mobility, but not much. When he was in his peak Alabama years, Tua could move. Yeah. Like, Tua was a, a scrambler. I just Huge. get worried, with the yeah. exception of Williams, that we're overrating these quarterbacks this year. I mean, that, that's fair. There's always a risk. And, I mean, and that's like, let's face it, one or two of these guys will end up actually being good NFL quarterbacks, right? That's just the numbers of it. But I think the point I've just gotten to now is that May has kind of all the pieces. You know, he's not perfect, but he's the one that, you know, outside of Caleb Williams, I, I, that's the only one I really, like, covet. The other ones, I, I'll take it if you give I mean, J.J. McCarthy, I'll take it if you give him to me. Jaden Downs, take it if you give it to me. But after that, it just gets it gets dicey, and I'd rather – Use an early second round pick on a guy that like one of these receivers who it's like, geez, this is going to be an impact player immediately. And, you know, other than, well, we're rolling the dice on Bo Nix. We'll see how it goes. But, you know, it might be I out totally of the league in a couple of days. I'm back to Freddie's thing when we were talking about Caleb Williams with Chicago and what would you do. And the reason why, personally, I wouldn't even entertain it if I was Chicago is because if I'm hell bent on taking a quarterback, I want my pick of the litter. And if it's, you know, if I'm going to trade down, 
you can't tell me that you're trading down because you're pulling like a Celtics, which is like the only example I can even think of that with with this kind of mentality was working with Jason Tatum. And they nailed it. They liked Tatum the best in that draft. And they were able to finagle their way into more assets while still getting the guy they thought was far and away the best player in the draft. And they were, and they were right. Like, that doesn't happen very often. No. Yeah. You know, like, the idea of Chicago saying, no, no, no. I, I know I have the number one overall pick, but instead of taking Caleb Williams, I'm going to take Drake May. Well, then just take Drake May. Like, why are you going to roll the dice that the guy that you really like is going to be available when you want to take him? And I would say the same thing to a much different, much broader extent to what you're talking about, Mike. With the so if you're at three and you don't love the guy that's available, and you end up taking Joe Walt or Harrison or trading down, whatever. I am now no longer really interested in a quarterback. I will take one if it makes sense, and I think I might. But now I'm like, if I want a quarterback in this draft, yeah. And I don't think the guy I'm going to take at 11 is better than the guy that I had a chance to take at three. Like, why would I want to go down and roll the dice? Like, so you, I'm not sh- I can't. In other words, I can't be sure that Penix is available at 11. And if I like Penix better than May, why not just take, take Penix at take three? Take Penix, right? Yeah. Because uh, well, I just think that t- I disagree just because I think you need to keep the pipeline stocked at that position. I think it's important to have young talent oh, no, at the quarterback I'm not saying position. don't take a quarterback. I'm saying I'm not taking a quarterback with the thought of I have my quarterback now. And we're going to go back to what you said about 20 minutes ago about Houston, and they didn't do it that way right away. Yeah. Well, first, when Casario first got there, they still had Deshaun Watson. That's yeah. when everything started to bubble, and then Watson said, I'm out. I'm not staying. And they kind of called his bluff, if you remember. And what they did was they middled it. They said, yeah, he might, be not, he might not stay, but what did they do? Same draft as the Mac Jones yeah, draft. Stanford what did they do? Kid, right? Davis, Davis, Mills. Davis, Davis Mills. Mills. That's my point. In the second round. Yeah. That, like, you can do that, but you don't have your guy. You is don't my, is my point. You you don't unless he's Jalen Hurts. Like you you know and like that's the thing is like. But you I'm knew willing, he wasn't. No, you no, did. A lot of people thought that Davis Mills could be the guy. Just that they talked themselves into it. People kicked themselves that they didn't take him at fifteen. I I just think that instead of Mac, if you have a guy like a a Knicks like a Penix that has the potential to maybe be that that in the league. I, I think it's too important of a position to just punt on it in the draft. And I do not want to punt on it. Yeah. I'm just saying if, I, if I'm if i going to wait, if I want the quarterback to be my quarterback of the future, I'm taking the best one I can get, the best one on my board. And, if that, like I said, if I think Penix is better than May, I'm taking him. That, I don't think they think that. I would just say that you also have to look ahead to 2025. And I think – Totally agree with that too. In 2025, Bo Nix and Michael Penix might be the two, the two best quarterbacks in the class – in 2025 so i think the good thing about this class with the quarterbacks is that it is a good quarterback class so bo Nix in a a normal year probably gets propped up into that like kenny pickett mac jones range but this year there's so many good quarterbacks at the top that he's gonna go maybe late first round early second round so look at 2025 and say do we think bo Nix is gonna be better than shador sanders than quinn ewers or at least on the same playing field I, I just think that it's a too important a position to go into next year with your quarterback room as Jacoby Brissett and Bailey Zappi it's just there's not oh, enough potential I, in that room yeah. I don't think it will but I don't look at it as really all that different I think it'll be those probably those two guys and you know one of these second third round picks yeah like, like Joe Milton see yeah, like Joe Milton somebody. to me is you now you're you're going too far you're too yeah. far gone on I, that. I, like I if it's think, Knicks I just or maybe Rattler, Rattler I could Rattler's be like the cutoff okay yeah. well, let's use Rattler Instead yeah. of instead of Joe Milton. Gardner we'll Minshew. Because, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, you have three quarterbacks on your roster. You don't have a quarterback on your roster, if you ask me. Yeah. He's but, Gardner Minshew. But I totally agree with Evan's mentality. I know you do too, Mike, because we talk about it all the time. You take a quarterback. Yeah. Because you don't know when the next Wilson Prescott got, you know, th- it happens. I mean, there are four or five guys out there that were taken after the first round that are good. So maybe you can get the next one. But I'm going to look at my quarterback room the same way. Is that, you know, like I'm going to look at it as until proven. Otherwise, I don't have that. Right. Hey, Patriots fans, if you want to see Toyota's best offers, including those not seen on TV, go to buyatoyota.com. 
It's Toyota's official website for deals from the official vehicle of the New England Patriots. Toyota, let's go take a draft pick. And you know what? You should also, this is a inter or intra department read. This is internal. I just want to read this for everybody. Uh, if you want to support to the home team, join New England's event staff here at Gillette Stadium. Seasonal positions are available in food and beverage, parking, and security. Come meet us in person at Walk-In Wednesday, every Wednesday in April from 8.30 a.m. to 6.30, Gillette Stadium E1 entrance. You may get an on-the-spot offer to join the team. So we're having our own little combine this month for event staff. Are you uh, trying to tell me something? No, but if you're, you're looking at me a lot when you say that. If you're li you, I could see you doing parking. Those guys are gruff. parking. Yeah, like, get out of here. You don't have the right tag. You're don't, give go. The don't give the parking attendants. Uh, they're it's, just doing the job that they've job. been assigned. It's a tough job. I always you get, have to remind myself that, that they're um, just doing their job. No, but <laughs> if, you're, if you're in the area and you're looking for some, some extra coinage uh, during the season, yeah, join the team. Every, uh, every Wednesday in April, 8.30 to 6.30 here at Gillette Stadium. All right. Like so. All right. Um, let's, keep, let's keep going here. Uh, uh, get the listeners involved, Freddie. Yeah, a related uh, subject, but a little different. Bill in Vista, California, writes, In last Thursday, the crew mentioned Coach Prime and how he has a short list of teams for Ch Shador and Hunter to not go to. The crew talked about how NIL is changing the landscape and giving prospects more power over where they could potentially end up being drafted. With that being the case, would it make more sense to now restructure how the draft works? Maybe change to a lottery system with picks not being finalized until the morning of the draft would definitely make for a more entertaining event, chaos and all. Wow. Well, that's your thing, Fred. You've been, you've been up for a, a I, draft lottery for a while, right? I say, I say. Whole thing, though, 1 to 32 or just like top 10? No, ju just the first round. Just first round. Complete new lottery. Everybody's yeah. team is in the hat. First round is, you know, complete random. And then second through seventh, you go back to worst, to, you know, Worst is first, but that's that's been Freddie's sort of uh, dream for a while. Yep. That's that's Freddie's baby, yep. the, the draft lottery. Yep. How does that uh, impact the Shador Sanders situation? You yeah, know, like, I, I, yeah. You know, yeah, the, the, I'm not sure the situation that the, the NIL. Situation. Yeah, they're talking about uh, Sanders has talked about um, his players are going to have a list of teams that the, the you know no fly zones. You know, don't draft me because I'm not signing with you. Right. So what's the difference if you have a lottery? I know that that's a, that doesn't. But the, let's talk about the whole – like he says, NIL has changed. I get it. Now people like Shador have money going into the NFL, that whereas in the past – like In other words, they can afford to sit out. They can afford right. to sit out and wait until next year's draft, I guess. Is that what he means? Yeah. It's, it's completely changed the landscape for the draft. The draft is even – it's less deep as a result of NIL because less underclassmen are declaring – because they can just go back to school. There's the transfer portal, and they can just make money that way and then help their draft stock in the process to go even earlier the following year. Uh, the, but I, at some point, they run out of eligibility, right? Yes, but <laughs> I, I just think NIL is a disaster, honestly, for college football. You and Nick I, Saban. I think, that, I think Nick Saban got a lot of heat for what he said because he's an old head and, oh, you know, it's he's mad that it's not the way that it used to be where he could just, like, build these super teams – I think that it's it's bad for the sport that these kids can just jump ship and go to a different place in the transfer portal. Well, that's and different. Cre NIL create, is that, those are two different things. The well, transfer portal but, and NIL. But it all goes hand in hand because they're going in a lot of times to the highest bidder that's giving them the most NIL money, and that's why they're going into the portals because but they're at a smaller all, school, it, and now right, they're – Right, exactly. But the transfer portal could exist without NILs, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. But I like the transfer portal. I think I, to give these players options, like why do you like you get on a team, they give you the boat, and you don't get to play. I want to play. I want to go to a team where I can play. But, but these aren't people that aren't playing. These right. are this the is, transfer portal isn't about giving teams up kids opportunity to play somewhere where they're not playing. Some of them are. The vast is, majority of them are doing exactly what Evans said. They're going to the highest bidder. Th this is turning into AAU. Well, yeah, where, where but, like now and now every single draft but prospect. But what I'm saying is, if, if there was teams. no NIL. I the think portal the wouldn't be as prevalent as it is. Well, it's, it'd still be big, yeah. but it wouldn't be anywhere near like it is now. No, it isn't. It Every wouldn't. one of these teams loses but, a vast majority of their stock. I just line. don't want to lump 
the tra- I know they're related, but I don't want to lump the uh, NILs with transfer portals because I think transfer portal on its own, I think, is a good thing. I think it's horrible. I think it's completely ruined. Because fast, of fast. NIL. No. Because of the, the prevalence of transferring. But but you should have there should be like a consequence. Yeah. I, I think let the let it, let the kid go to a place where he wants to go. Correct. Well, you know, well, case did, by case basis. Yeah. So the five people that do that I have no problem with. Yeah. When you're losing ten of your twenty two uh, starters to the portal, but that but that, that's a problem. But right now that's happening because of NIL. But what I'm telling you is it's happened in basketball for a while. Yeah. Well it yeah. had nothing to do with NIL. Yeah. What Kids ha- playing like forty minutes a game for one power five school just transfer to another power five school. Like all the time. But why? All different reasons. Yeah. What happened now, having my, a sit my out? guess that doesn't exist is, anymore. It's now above board and everybody knows it's money. My guess is it's always been about money. Yeah. Well, yeah, under the table. I just think that what it what Saban said I thought was so spot on and the fact that all these kids just go to Nick Saban now before he retired, obviously, and say, well, what are you going to do for me? Like, why should I stay at Alabama? Like, what are you going to pay me? What assurance? Like, are you going to, am I going to start next year? Are you going to promise me that? Because, you know, USC, you know, Lincoln Riley just called and he said he's going to give me a mill and I'm going to start. And like, that, that's not what it's all about, you know? And, and then you also get into this problem where these guys are transferring and it's AAU. They're just like creating these super teams, you know, where all, and it's just, so I don't think that's but, good but, for the but tra- that, transfer. But, but you just said that before in the old system, Nick Saban was creating the super team. But he had to at least recruit the players to the team and wow. develop them as freshmen up until the point where they and, were. And how was he go. recruiting them? Maybe it was money, but I'm just <laughs> see my get my, my like. I just think it's. I, I go a little bit halfway, not, not as far as Evan, and certainly not like. Not whatever not, you are. Let them go wherever <laughs> they want. Let there be anarchy everywhere. Uh, I'm a little bit in the middle. Um, yeah, sure. Transfer like once. These guys can transfer like indiscriminately. There's guys that play for three and four teams in four years. Like there's a problem with that. They don't ever have to. There's no repercussions, no ramifications at all. They just go wherever they want. Um, but it, it is to me, it's it's about money. No one like begrudges a kid's ability. All right. I got recruited by Florida State as a quarterback and I go through and this guy who's the same class as me beat me out. I don't think anybody would say that kid should have to stay there and carry the clipboard for four no. years. No one would say that. Okay. I certainly wouldn't say that. But the problem is like what Evan's talking about, it's like they don't need the coach to open up doors for them anymore because they're making so much. So it's getting worse. So it's the combination of the two that is getting no, worse. I do now. believe when it comes to NIL, they're going to have to do something about that. They're going to have to police it a little bit more. Yeah. That's all I'm saying because it, to, it basically yeah. is like they're free agents every and single they're year kind now. Of, they're kind of like giving up. Like they yeah. they lost another lawsuit and they said, but we're not going to fight this anymore. I'm not asking them to, I don't know what they're to gonna ban do. it or something like no. that. I'm just asking there needs to be a, a, a policing. Like it needs but to why be can't structured. They, why can't they get paid like a uniform number? Like around the country, like so, so there's not any gross salary inequ- yeah. Yeah. right? Or well, what about like contracts? Like, what if you're gonna if you're gonna let them? Well, get they sign paid, contracts, but uh, they, but a are lot of them do. Are they signing contracts with the school? Some of them do. Like yeah. you're gonna be here for two years, like yeah. in our side. You know, yeah. this is now where, everybody says like my lawyer guys, the, you know, my friends and stuff that know a lot more about the business world than I do. They say, yeah, they, a lot of them sign contracts, but they re- you know they just buy themselves out of them. Yeah, and they just go. <laughs> It's it's interesting. I, there, when it comes to the NA, NALs, they have to do something. It is getting out yeah. of control. So I'm not saying that they should never be allowed to transfer, Fred. Yeah. I just think that the transferring was already out of control before NIL. Now it's uh, now the NIL has made it completely. But, but when did they get rid of having to sit out a year when COVID. you transfer during COVID? So they just uh, abolished that, or I think it might have been a little before that. But yeah, a lot of times. See, I think yeah. I think that's unfair too. Like, no, why? I don't. I don't think you have to. Sh- you should have to sit out a year. My whole thing is just, uh, again, is that I just feel like it sets a bad precedent of like we're just going to keep jumping ship until I find this the most money with the great situation and the the superstar receivers around me, and then we got into the situation where we're sitting here talking about the draft and Jaden Daniels is playing on an all star team and Michael Penix is playing on an all star team and you know Bo Nix was 
horrible at Auburn, like not even a draftable prospect. And he goes to Oregon and now he's a first round pick. And it's like good for him. You know, he's been, <laughs> they've been in college for six years. They're all 25 years old. Well, that's it's like at some that's point, a COVID it, problem that I'm not going to blame the NCAA on because I mean, well, I guess ultimately I am blaming them because I thought it was a foolish decision that they gave everybody. And here we are 2024 and there's still guys, you know, it really only affected the spring sports one year and they allowed everybody to have an extra yeah. year of eligibility. And it really destroyed recruiting classes and it's going to be interesting. Charts. I, I wonder what Charlie Baker is going to do because, yeah. you know, he's now the head of the NCAA. I like him a lot, and I don't think that he's an empty suit. I just don't yeah. think – I think he's powerless. I don't mm-hmm. think he's going to be able to do anything. Yeah. See all the hockey transfers too. The same thing. I mean, it's just entered the portal. As soon as the NCAA tournament is – There's like, guys, you know, there's guys the in portal. the tournament that are already in the portal, <laughs> that their teams are still al- alive in the NCAA tournament, right. and they're already in the portal. Um. Let's see. Ford in Savannah, Georgia says, yeah. please no to Bo Nix. Yeah. Uh, we just traded him to Jacksonville for a six round pick, maxed out college quarterback who bolstered accuracy stats and won't be the reason that you win on Sundays. The strange knock I've heard on Penix, which I don't understand, is he's a great choice if you want to sit back and watch someone throw the ball. Yes, that is exactly what I want to do sit back and watch my quarterback throw the ball beautifully. I don't know, understand that piece, but I I understand the Bo Nix piece. Like if you think that Bo Nix, you know, I, I always people always describe as it's boring. Like watching him play is boring because you know he just kind of does what he's asked to do, and there's no extra flavor to it. There's no you know Dan, Drake May running around off platform like that. Does he's just gonna make the throws that are available to him? So, but isn't That's that it. Penix too? Like Penix is just gonna sit in the pocket and yeah, he's gonna Lunch now. Bombs. For, Against he, Texas, he he's going to throw. He's going to throw it down the field. Yeah, and you ask him. You, you do what Michigan did to him, and I think you rendered him powerless. Yeah, Penix definitely has the down the deep ball and the the big time throws down the field. Bo Nix, that's not his game. Bo Nix is like accuracy within fifteen yards of the line of scrimmage, get it out on time, be it, able to distribute. It's like the ball. you know that that's some of my worry with McCarthy, and and I, and I know that Evan said he was less concerned about the unknown. I am more concerned with that part of it because on the rare occasions when he's sort of been pressed, I don't think he's looked all that good. And I think of like the TCU game in the playoffs two years ago, we threw a couple of pick sixes. And I think of the Alabama game that he won this year. It was, by the way, a very average Alabama team for their standards. Yeah, He comes out and throws a pick on the first play of the game that got overturned by a blade of grass. And I just didn't think he looked really good in that game. Now, did he make plays in that game? That helped them win. Yeah, he did. He he rebound he rebounded from that bad start. I thought. Yeah, that made a couple the of plays. One big drive at the end. I didn't think he was great in the Washington game. I thought the Washington game, the way the Washington, the way the Michigan defense played Penix, that game I thought should have been a blowout. I thought the a, a good quarterback would have Brady'd that game and put it all. It would have been over in the middle of the mm. second quarter. Now I'm not. Don't. Mi- make that take that literally I'm not comparing jj mccarthy Buck- saying he should be like brady i'm Bucky saying brooks did so. <laughs> i'm saying that kind of mentality like we're dominating this game we're far superior on the field we should have a three touchdown lead right now and they didn't like that game kind of stayed closer than it should have been i thought throughout and it was in my opinion because the offense couldn't make plays yeah the the interception on the first play against alabama i have not been able to get that out of my head it was the first game i watched of jj mccarthy and is the first play i watched of him and he just throws a god awful interception like just that was a bad play i i don't even know what he was looking maybe at maybe i'm guilty of, of that too and i just i for since then i just that's the type of guy that you're signing up for is a you know Biggest game of his life, and he throws into a team meeting, right. and it's just intercepted and like again, on the first like play of the game. Like that TCU game in the playoffs, I think they ended up losing that game something like fifty-one to forty-five. So it's not like he like tucked tail and, and hid because he played a bad game. He he bounced back, but I think you know the reason they lost was him ultimately. Uh, Spee and Fresno, Paul and Evan had a little dust up over Jacoby Brissett a few shows back, so I came up with several Brissett related wagers. They could go head to head on. <laughs> nope. Each has mildly <laughs> humiliating terms for the loser. In all cases, the closest guess without going over wins. If you go over, you both lose. One, how many games will Brissett start this season? Loser has to eat a Subway six inch engineered by the PU listeners I'm live out. on the show, of course. I'm out. I'm not. We're not allowed to do this, so <laughs> I'm, I'm I, can't, not, well, I can't partake. I'm not sure, you partaking in that. You could. So, how many games will Brissett start this season? I have no idea. 
I'm going to say <laughs> 12. You're just not going to play. 12. I was going to say 5. I'm you gonna you think 12. Why? We don't even yeah. know when the bye week is. See, that's pu- that's part of it, though. <laughs> I, need, I need to know when right, the bye week is. Right. I, I say four. <laughs> four. Felger and Maz show up. You got to take them out at the bye yeah. week, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> if I the bye week's like week seven, I and say that's a four. nice cushiony spot. Four. Uh, you guys. Yeah. I know. Wow. Well, it's a weird point like because it's – can I, I get mean, I see what under? Paul's saying. Like, you're really not playing the rookie this year. I think we're going to get Drake May, and I don't think end. Drake May is going to be ready. No. Uh, what will Brissett's QB rating be in the first game he plays this season? Loser has to go commando for the Tuesday show following the game. Who? Out there swinging free like oh. Kramer. I'd rather lose that oh, one yeah, than no, the first one. No. no one wants that. No. No one wants it, but. QB rating for the I'd first game he plays. Oh, jeez. 89.6. Yeah, I was going to say. 100. We need like over unders at least. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. How many game winning drives will Brissett have by the mid season mark? Loser has to sing the national anthem live on the show, standing with ha- hand on heart. One. I'll say none. One as well. By mid season, I'd say none. <laughs> Fred laughs. <laughs> what happened to you? You well, remember how optimistic you used to be? <laughs> none. Four and thirteen. So now happens. he's gonna now he's gonna spin it. They're not gonna need any game winning drives. <laughs> They're gonna blow people <laughs> out. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. Ryan writes in. Love the show, he says. People give Chicago a hard time for not picking Mahomes since he's won two Super Bowls, but I'm not convinced Three. if Mahomes went to the Bears, he would be who he is today. I think he would be a lot worse. K C has a good roster and fantastic coach, so it set him up for success. Question is, besides Tom, what players do you think would have had a Hall of Fame career if they were not in such a positive situation? Roster coaching organization. Patrick Mahomes, Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady. Yeah. Like Hall of Fame careers, regardless of where they went. I'm going to you know. Probably Ben Roethlisberger, Phil Rivers. Mahomes is an interesting case, though, because he did sit out, sit out the year. Yeah, I'm not saying he wasn't helped by it. I, uh, he he was more of a developmental guy. Like, obviously, I'm not going all the way. But Brady was a six-round pick, so I'm not saying, he, you know. But in terms of the guys that were drafted that early, I can see what he's saying, that if he goes to Chicago, their weapons are a mess, their coaching staff's a mess. Are their weapons any more of a mess than the Kansas City's are right now? Yeah, but they he's already anybody like DJ Moore. But he's already at the peak of his powers now. Like if you had thrown him into that as a rookie and he doesn't already have the knowledge and the grasp of the game that he sure. has now. Well, I I think a lot of Andy Reid. So I think that absolutely helped him immensely. I can imagine the behind the scenes of his rookie year, Andy Reid after practice, the uh, footwork drills, all the little details. I also think know. he may have inherited the best incumbent quarterback for that role that he possibly could have had yeah. in Alex. Smith. I think that's what they hope Jacoby Brissett is. Yeah, nice uh, Same thing. Your guy Rasheed Rice there, Paul. What do you, you got to say about that one? I think that establishes that I was right because that's what happens with those kinds of players when they he likes when to they go hit. fast, Mike. Um, fast. So, has there been any updates about that? I just I read the, I last time thing like he's cooperating with police, yeah. but like was he there or not? I don't know. It sounds like well, they no, think they he have was, him on camera, like walking away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw that video. It, there's no doubt he was there. Yeah. I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, they have him on camera. I saw a camera from about nine miles away with like a couple of people walking away. I don't yeah. know who they were. They, they, they I wouldn't know she writes if he was sitting next to Evan. I love him, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just <laughs> thought he looked good on tape. Sorry. Didn't mean, didn't mean to identify a good player in the draft. <laughs> look, look good on this tape. Is why, this is why I don't <laughs> do it. Film. Tape or film? This is like, why I don't do it. The digital video. The YouTube highlight. I get, <laughs> I get them right, and this is what happens to them. Yeah, I call it the dig, like the digital video. You breaking down the dig. You're not breaking down film anymore. You get that, you get that a lot. Oh, yeah. What, you just watch YouTube highlights of these guys, and then you, you rank them? Like yep. A, oh. Like a scout. Yep. I think the first sentence is going to rule out this next email, but oh. Tyler from Connecticut says, I know it's a long shot, but rumors around the league are talking about the possibility of J.J. McCarthy reuniting with Coach Harbaugh in L.A. Is, is that even a possibility? I, I will say, as much as I, I was thinking about this the other day, is there a chance that all of this J.J. McCarthy is going second overall, all this J.J. McCarthy going third overall – Who's sitting there at number five and doesn't need a quarterback? Right. Jim Harbaugh. So is there a chance that Jim Harbaugh is putting this all out in the world so that the position player, the non-quarterback that he wants at five, is sitting there on a silver platter because four quarterbacks go ahead of him? Yes. 
I, I, I think that that's... I like that smokescreen better than, you know, like, the Patriots aren't going to the pro day for Michael Penix because they want to take him at 34. <laughs> I just... I no, that, makes that no makes, sense That makes me. perfect sense. Right, because now, you know, oh, Arizona's going to trade out of their pick because Minnesota's going to trade into it, and, the, you right. know, right? And now, all of a sudden, Joe Alt is just on a right. silver platter. Take for, the quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah, right. But I have heard a lot about the Harbaugh thing and would they trade Herbert. And go with McCarthy. I, I mean, I don't oh see god. why you would do that. Oh my god, but I can't imagine. Be crazy. I can't imagine it. I think it would be crazy too, like legit crazy. Right? You have a guy that you know. If you're Jim Harbaugh and you watch that guy play, you know you can win with him. <laughs> right. Right. You like, have well, to. What's know your you can What's win the hole you're poking? Especially in his if game. you're like a guy like Harbaugh, like and and with me coaching right, him, right. He goes up to right. another he, level. He throws the ball too good. He's, yeah, he's too yeah. athletic. He's unless, too athletic. Unless he's just so stubborn and he's just going to say, "Well, we're going to line up two backs in the backfield, right. with two tight ends. We're going to run the JJ's, football. JJ's we're going to run the off. football because we want to be tough on both sides of the line." Of good luck with that, <laughs> uh, Eric in Idaho. I was listening to Solomon Wilcots. Sully. And his guest from the opening drive on NFL Network driving to work this morning, they were discussing how Drake May is basically a less athletic and worse thrower of the ball than Daniel Jones. Obviously, these guys have lost their minds with this opinion, but I was wondering if you guys actually see any comparisons between May and Jones. I just don't see how they can come out with that conclusion. I do. I do see similarities. I think he's more athletic than Daniel Jones, but, yeah, I, I think Daniel Jones has proven that Ability is not his problem. I think he can play. Well, he can run. I think he's similar. He can play. Period. Similar body type as Daniel Jones. He's built a little bit like Daniel Jones. I think Daniel Jones at Duke was was way more conservative than. I agree with that. Drake too. Drake May has got a way more of that gunslinger in him than Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones was always. Daniel Jones. Alex Smith. You know, just like we're, you know, I'm athletic. I can throw the ball pretty well, but I'm just never going to push it. I thought that Daniel Jones was overdrafted. I mocked that pick. I remember the night when it happened. Um, mocked and made fun of. No, not, yeah, yeah, not, yeah, no. You, yeah, mock, no. you knew. I didn't, no, but Fred, I don't, mo- I don't do mock drafts, so I didn't mock him going six <laughs> overall to the Giants. I'm out on mock drafts, too. <laughs> but good for you, Evan. I'm out. Good He's, for you, Evan. He's gone right. to the dark side. Well, but finish your point, then we'll get <laughs> no, that. Did you, did you that's, have to? That's like stunning. I'm so very excited. So did you excited. have to go to mock draft rehab <laughs> to be out on mock drafts? He's out like, on mock drafts. That's the best thing I've heard I, I you think, say in the show ever. I think <laughs> that it stems from the fact that they have the third overall pick. So, like, how many different scenarios are we really talking about here? It's either – a Drake May mock draft, it's a Jaden mock draft, or it's a trade down mock draft. There's no other mock draft to do. That, right. Those are the only ones. Right. And there's only so many people they can trade down with. So you're getting yeah. everyone. Minnesota. So you're only yeah. out on mock drafts this particular year, then? We'll see. But I, so I, just, as, I just think it's might go dec- back. Yeah. It's not as big a declaration. I, 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 we're <laughs> back, baby. We're picking 20th. As, as I do it more and more, though, I, and not just for myself, just reading them and seeing them, you notice how pointless they really are. No, no one's ever right. If you hit like twenty five percent of the first round, you did well. Oh yeah, and and it's so just it's what are we doing them for? Clicks. That's yeah. it. And that's, that's it. And that's there's nothing I hate I mean, worse. Yeah, than yeah. and that's all I did as a it's fan. It's a good content. No, right. but it got a lot of clicks. Yeah, I mean, when, and they, there weren't a lot of like just solo team mock drafts. I remember, but I, you know, it's like you click on, you scroll down, you who they got? Huh, 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 all right, you know, you look at your team. I don't know. That's what I, I get it. Do. Trust me, I get it. I, you know, yeah. I, I totally. But if you get don't it, really but. know what's going on. Like if you're a, a real, you know, neophyte and all this thing, looking at mock drafts gives you a good idea of who are the top rated guys. Yeah. You know, sure. Yeah, I think that that's the only so that's the only value that they truly have yeah. is okay. I have picked fifteen. Who are the five guys that everybody's way, saying is right. going to be in our range? You know, yeah. so I can have ten guys that I'm looking at. Yeah, you know, that sort of thing. But I, you, we just we're doing them on video and stuff like that, Deuce and I, and we we only did a, a couple yeah. this year because it's just how many different scenarios could you possibly come up with? There's not, there's three. I just laid them out. That's it. Um, Chris writes in. He's from Colfax, California. Can someone tell me anything good about JJ McCarthy? <laughs> I personally think he will be waiting tables at the local Waffle House within three years. He's a passenger along for the ride at a position where you're supposed to be driving the bus. I see a faster Mac Jones and really hope the idea of taking him in New England is a smokescreen. I fully support taking whichever is there between May or Daniels. They are worth uh, worth missing on. I don't think he wrote that right. McCarthy is yeah. not. You take McCarthy at three or otherwise – and you're looking at taking a quarterback within two seasons. That being said, if they take him, I'm sure I'll talk myself into him because I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, I think he was right. I mean, that's something I've been saying. They're worth missing on. I just think, you know, you're not going to feel bad if you take Drake May and he can't put it all together. He's got all the skills. He's, 
you know, you can at least talk yourself into that he can compete with the big dogs in the NFL where even with someone like Mac, I never felt like I could, you know, if he had the right pieces around him, they'll compete with those teams. Totally but I never agree. thought that he could go toe to toe with guys. Yeah, I, I don't think JJ McCarthy plays anything like Mac Jones. Like I get the national championship thing and the big time program, but I think the positives for JJ McCarthy are he does have plus arm. You know, he does he can put the the ball you know velocity wise. He can throw the ball pretty well, and he's got some mobility. Like he's not a statue. You know, he's got some. He's uh, tough. He's got some he's mobility to too. get outside the pocket make some plays happen, you know, pull some things out of his hat. You know, against Alabama, they ran that that double pass, and he catches it one-handed and then turtles around and throws a dime to Roman Wilson, like, on the money. You know, he's got some of that ability to make plays that Mac Jones didn't have, uh, but his consistency is nowhere near as good as what Max was at Alabama. I agree. I, I've seen some things about him, you know, bought from him that I know why people are talking themselves into him. I definitely see his skill set. The, the um, league really likes his very consistent release, like good, consistent platform with his feet, uh, quick release, you know, tight release with his, his arm angles and stuff like that. You know, they look at him as a as a pretty mechanically sound thrower as well. Uh, let's see. Rinaldi writes in. Uh, he goes, Mike, thanks for nerding out a bit last week and sharing your thoughts on the book The Pack Away. I wanted to check it out myself, but I saw it was $399 on Amazon. <laughs> Please tell me you didn't no. pay full. Why is it three hundred? Oh, no. Sure, it wasn't three dollars and ninety nine. Yeah, no, I got it yeah. for about six bucks. It's, yeah, it's yeah. on either on eBay or yeah, maybe it was I, a signed edition by you know. Ron oh, Reeves. oh, yeah, no, no that I mean that's like Bill Walsh book numbers. Like yeah. that book is impossible to find. But there, there's plenty of cheap ones out there. Uh, anyway, I decided to get Mike Lombardi's book, Gridiron Genius, oh, instead, sorry. and it's been a good read so far. Question for all of you: What football-based books do you recommend for all fans of the sport? Or Patriots fans to read can be strategy based, biography, etc. I actually just did kind of I googled like best football books because I reading this one it just made me want to read a little bit more um, football history. But I, I always think the Halberstam book on Belichick was a good one. That's I a good one. That one. I'll take your eyes off the ball by Pat Kerwin is good yep. if you kind of want to learn a little bit basic more. strategy. You know, like yep. you know that type of stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of like good football books that I've read. Bill Walsh's book that we mentioned. Yeah. I never read that book. I so. took it out from like that L.A. library. I had to go to like the downtown library in L.A. to get it. Um, it's really hard to find. It's out of print. When I was a kid, I read like Jim Bouton, Ball Four, and I read uh, the, the Connie Hawkins book, Foul, I think it was called. Um, those are like biography type yeah. books. Yeah. See, I like those. Yeah. I don't have any interest in these other ones. Why like, is that, Paul? Like, dry. Well, like, yeah, you learn well, stuff. Uh, no. <laughs> well, I mean, if like I understand what he's he's looking for something because he's he, he's looking for a book that's going to help him learn the game a little bit. Then you gave him suggestions. Yeah. I would say like, take your eye off the ball is the best. The Packer like, one. Book. I, yeah, like I, I got that one. Um, I don't have any interest in taking my eye off the ball. I have a son who I told you is an offensive lineman, and I do not take my eye off the ball and watch him. <laughs> you so. don't even watch him. <laughs> no. <Wow. laughs> uh, what was a couple ones? I, I um. A couple ones I put on my on my list, and I haven't read these yet, but these are on my to read. North Dallas Forty, uh, when Pride Still Mattered, um, and then I'd love well, to. Like Friday Night Lights is a good North book. Dallas. Well, that's a you, see, fiction. again that, work of fiction. Oh, that's true. That's fiction. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa! Oh no, it, it's it's real. Nah. Friday Night Lights is not fiction. Yeah, no. Hollywoodized. The book. The book that I I'm pretty sure that there's some exaggeration there. I don't think so. I mean, it, may, it might be the right path and everything that they went on, but I... I, I thought they spent uh, a lot of time with that program. The, Maybe we're like thinking the, of two so different versions. Oh, right. right, yeah. I, th that author, I've heard... What's his Peter name? Peter Berg and... Um, uh, well, that's the film no, director, it, right? Bu no, no, Buzz, no, no, Buzz, Buzz, Buzz Bissinger. Bissinger. Buzz Bissinger I, I is think the of, author. Yeah, right. Peter Berg is right. the director. Yeah. Buzz yeah. Bissinger, Mike's guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that I don't think that's fiction. Maybe I'm thinking I have of no movie. idea. No, it's not. It's not like, like the movies and the fiction. TV show. Like the TV show is complete fiction. Yeah, but the the book I think is real. Okay, Booby Miles is a real person. Okay, one I'd like to get my hands on too. Doctor Z wrote Thinking Man's Guide to Football, which I've you know was in like the seventies. But that's another one I'd kind of like. Peter to King had a book about like the history of the NFL or the history of pro football. Oh, uh, my, Michael McCambridge writes history nfl history books that i think are probably worth reading for that as uh, as an example if you if you googled michael M i think it's m-a-c mick mac cambridge okay michael um, mccambridge he has uh, some stuff 
I, I like the biography. Like, North Dallas 40, I bet you, is really good. Yeah. I never read it, but I, I, that, that stuff is... The movie was funny. I, did, I didn't see the movie was, either. The yeah. Great. yeah. The but movie's great. Somebody put a list of, like, best football books. Every time we say it's a business, you say it's just a game. Every time you say it's a game, we say it's a business. Hmm. I like that. Um, okay. Here we go. Yeah, Jasper and Somerville... Wanted to break up the draft talk and ask you a personal question as okay. fans. Let's say the Patriots for the next 25 years don't win another Super Bowl. Oh boy. Outside of simply being competitive and making it to the playoffs, what scenarios or stories would give you the most enjoyment as fans of the team? I personally just want superstars and continuity. I want to be able to follow and enjoy homegrown talent that's elite. I like that. I like how we said it. I mean, that's something I think as a fan that's been kind of missing around here is – you know, that lack of continuity and really just having players that as a fan you can kind of get behind and, you know, you identify with Who the you team. Who you buy in the jersey. Who you buy in the jersey. You know, they don't they don't have a lot of that identity right now. So I'd agree. So I mean, are we saying that I, I guess they're I, not going to win. What do you they're what not going to win, win championships? They're not going to win a championship, what do you championship but is he saying okay. short, you know, not counting? Play, like I would want to see a playoff caliber team. Like I don't yeah. want continuity if I'm not winning anything. Right. You don't want to watch a like Barry Sanders get his teeth kicked in like, while he looks awesome for. R- well, eight Barry years Sanders or might be an exception that I would say if my team's going to stink, at least I have an all-time right. great that I'm watching. Okay. Well, Matthew Stafford. I, I could I could take <laughs> myself you know I, I could do that but Just something about it, it, you know I have elite. Like is that what he said? Like you know a continuity with elite play like I don't have that. I think he I'm was kind of saying. That there are elite players that you could yeah, play. Yeah, like a Barry you Sanders. A Barry yeah. Sanders would be, Johnson, would be yeah. one. Yeah. One of one. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I, I can't imagine anybody that I would want to really watch on a team that just sucks. Especially like a receiver. Like, I want new players. Like, can't get the ball to them. It's yeah. frustrating. Yeah. Oh, like if the Patriots drafted Marvin Harrison Jr. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Uh, it all comes back. <laughs> Alex and Raleigh, what if the NCAA decided to tell the transfers they have to give up pay for a year in order to transfer? That would put a halt to all these transfers. No, it wouldn't. Um, on to the draft. Take the quarterback and protect him, and we can't have another quarterback be scared of his shadow when he hikes the ball. I'm hopeful the offense will be the main focus of the draft, and we can see an improvement. Even Devin McCourty says offense, offense, That's offense. That's true. We were there. We were yeah. there. We yeah. were there. Yeah. He said, I hope they go offense, offense, offense. So he did. What was that? The draft. The draft preview, preview party, party for season ticket holders. Oh. It was fun. It was a good time. Devin nice. was, uh, was excellent. When was that? Saturday. Saturday. Oh. He was excellent. You know, it's just, it's, I think it's, we were like, fans can't really be mad at Devin McCourty right now. You know, like everybody just loves Devin and everybody else can, can be put in the crosshairs. But, you know, I think he expressed, I mean, there was no, there was nothing about the dynasty really, but, um, you know, I think that he, he's able to just kind of toe that line pretty well right now between media and being a Patriot and criticizing the team a little bit, but also, you know, not, not having to go overboard with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Aaron in Atlanta, um, two things. If you could go back to the last five drafts and change a single draft pick using hindsight, which would you pick and who would you pick instead? So that's the first question. A.J. Brown over Nikhil Harry. Oh, that's a good one. I mean, Easiest yeah. answer. I'd need, I mean, that comes off the top of my head. But Anyone over Cole Strange? <laughs> yes. Did that? Did you guys yeah, play the whole thing of that? Unfortunately. Yeah. Oh we man. Played, we played a lot of so it. It went, it went on way too long. That was a treat for me because I had never heard it. True story. <laughs> when I, when I was interviewing for the position, I actually told Mike about it because I was worried that it, it might come like, up. We like him, but I was listen like, to what he said about. Can you I believe like, this? FYI, about this Cole Strange, on the our first round pick. He doesn't that's like great. him. That is so great. And I, I was right. I'm pretty sure that I had a similar. I know that's why you put it side by side with Paul's I, reaction on Cole Strange. Like, if he had been drafted in the know. fifth round I'm or the just fourth round, to block you know. Yeah, no, and I honestly you just been, find a I've way to sympathize with all the players. I do. Freddie. They're human beings. They really are. You're something else. <laughs> if the Patriots draft, to ba- get back on topic, if the yeah. Patriots draft A.J. Brown instead of Nikhil Harry, does Tom Brady retire oh. a Patriot? Probably. I don't know. Did you see the darnest thing? <laughs> um, second one tell us about the time each of you got in the most trouble with your parents. Oh. I can't tell that on there. <laughs> does it involve drugs? Maybe. Oh, okay. That's all right. I don't think I ever really. I was a good kid. I didn't get in a I lot of. I can see time. that. You're For the most part, I was too. But I did get in. I got in a lot of mischievous trouble. I got caught skipping school, and that was bad. That was really. I think I was a freshman in high school. I think uh, the the closest I came to it was like one of the first drinking parties I ever went to, and it was like down at the power lines. You know, like that's where the parties are, like out in the woods. 
And so, you know, I'm all excited because walking distance and I had a couple friends sleep over. And so we walk out into the woods, you know, it was like a mile away down in the room. So we're all sitting there, you know, and it's like, all right, we have like 18 beers for everyone. Everyone gets like half a beer, you know, like that's like how bad it was. So we're sitting there all of a sudden it's getting dark. I'm like, hey, we bring flashlights. This is getting worse and worse. All of a sudden these flashlights kick on. It's the cops. And so I thought I was all of a sudden in like Rambo movie. Like I sprinted like right through a pond. Like got soaked and I was like, you know, huddling in the woods. I had like, you know, camouflage <laughs> on. I'm like, just... I'm like waiting to see how I can get home because, you know, I'm separated. So finally I make my way through the woods. You know, I lost my friends, though, that were supposed to be sleeping over. So I'm like, oh, no, I'll just run. And if the cops stop me, I'll be like, no, I'm just out for a run. You know, like 10 o'clock on Saturday. So I finally got home. I walked right in. And then that was like, we were at a party and I was drinking and no one was there. You, we you... lost all our friends. And my dad was like, all right, let's go. And so my you dad told your dad, oh, I just I just spilled it on my parents and they were laughing at me. They weren't even mad. And then we got the car. We went and we not only picked up the kids that were supposed to be sleeping over, but we picked up a couple other kids that my dad then said, come on, shower up at our house. And then he drove them home. So I yeah. can't. You told that's on yourself. I, oh, I, I, had, I had no. That's I such can't. a deuce move. I, I, I folded I quickly the first time I got caught drinking Same, in a similar kind of way. I felt like I got sick and. They, my parents came home like the next day they were away and they were like why is it all like everything is all clean is all, is all, you know. <laughs> and uh like an idiot i said uh, yeah i threw up instead of just saying i don't know i just dropped a soda or whatever and i was like you threw up i go yeah, i was feeling awful I, you know i cleaned it up a little bit uh, were you drinking? No. Were you drinking? yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's basically <laughs> how, that's basically how it went down yeah. i'm sorry yeah, but when I got caught skipping school, I was out with because I all my a lot of my friends went to Pope John and Mall and Catholic, and they were off that day. So I was like, "Oh, I'll just skip and I'll hang out with them." And my mother called my friend's house, <laughs> saying, "Let me, let me talk to Paul." He's, he's Paul not, who? He's not here. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Pearl, he's at school. <laughs> my Sincerely. friend, my friend Greg, um, Jimmy Thistle's brother-in-law. By Good the friend. way, okay. Good friend. Good um, friend. He said, yeah, he's at school. And like, well, yeah, okay, I know he's there, Greg. Let me just talk to him. I, I don't know what you're talking about. And he goes, and he goes, okay. So he hangs up, and he looks at me, and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> and it was like 10 o'clock in the morning, Whoa. and I had to go through the rest of the day because I couldn't go home. Right. Oh, I was at school. I had, I had to try to How did that play out? I had to try to play it out, right? So tough day, tough day. Tough, I waited, tests. I waited and waited and waited, and I walked <laughs> in and like I had my books under my arm. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. That was, that was tough. <laughs> and that was usually fine because my mother was like, my mother was like, you know, five two, and you know wasn't really packing a wallop. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah. Then my father got home and it was a little oh, different. Oh, oh. Yeah. I was like, hey, we already went through this. <laughs> Yeah, I, we'd have to have a whole show I to bet. talk about <laughs> that. The yeah. stuff I got in trouble for. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pleading the fifth on this. All one. right, um, Paul's Foods here, uh, so we got to eat. Um, anything before break? No. Okay, so we'll, we'll read some stuff when we come back. But right now, time to eat. We'll get back to more of your calls and emails after this. If you want to see Toyota's best offers and have a first look at that, including those not seen on TV, go to buyatoyota.com. It's Toyota's official website for deals from the official vehicle of the New England Patriots. Toyota, let's go to the DraftKings commercial. Uh, whether you're in the game or betting on the game, you'll need a game plan. DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the New England Patriots, provides you with everything you need to build your personal betting game plan so you can get in on all the action while practicing safe bets. Visit DraftKings.com slash Responsible-Gaming to learn more about all the safe betting tools DraftKings has to offer. Hope is here, 800-327-5050 or GamblingHelplineMA.org. Must be 21+. plus. Play it smart from the start. GameSenseMA.com. Physically present in Massachusetts. See DraftKings.com slash Responsible-Gaming for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Isn't it time to get exactly what you want? Welcome to Red Hot Deal Days from Verizon, where you get your pick of our best deals. Like my plan, where you can pick the perks you want and save on every one. For limited time, bring your own phones to a Verizon store and you can get my plan for our best price ever. Get exactly what you want in your phone plan and only pay for what you need. Bring your phones to your Verizon store today and get my plan. These deals won't last. It's your Verizon. What's up, everybody? Mike Disso sat down with Daniel Jeremiah in this week's episode of the Draft Countdown podcast presented by Bud Light. Let's take a listen. 
All right, so excited to be joined by Daniel Jeremiah now. Uh, DJ Patriots sitting at three overall. It seems like we're kind of, I know you, you took Jaden Daniels in your latest mock draft. Everybody, I think, has kind of accepted Drake May or Jaden Daniels. That seems like the most popular pick. Just what do you see in those two guys? What, what could fans here expect if, if you were to draft one of those guys? Do you think they're ready to come in and play right away? Do you think they have to sit? I think they could both come in and play. Um, I, I think uh, for sure, let's start with Jaden Daniels and let's start with that one. He, he's started a zillion games, started 50 plus games in college. He's older, he's mature, he's been through adversity. So, you know, those are the things you kind of look at when you're, you know, okay, is this guy going to be able to survive some of these, uh, these speed bumps along the way here? I think he would be fine. Um, I think also with him, the athleticism to be able to buy time and as he gets more comfortable, uh, in the passing game that, that they're going to deploy there, I think you've you've got ways to generate offense as he's still going to, you know, even though he's played a lot of college games, learn how to read NFL defenses and get adjusted there. I think his legs buy him some time. So I think you could absolutely get him out there. Um, you know, what you like about him, uh, look, the, the accuracy, especially over the top, he's got unbelievable touch. He played with confidence this year. I mean, there was so many slot fades that they hit. Um, they were just, you know, one after another after another, perfect over-the-shoulder throws. And then when things aren't there, you know, he can go make things happen with his legs. So th that's him as a player why I think he'd be fine going right into the mix. Drake May, you know, the prototype. You get the big, physical, um, athletic dude uh, who can – you know, to me, he can make every type of throw. And I mean that not just like velocity wise. He has the arm strength to do that. I mean, you'll see him layer the ball. He'll take take some some steam off the ball, touch it up. Uh, he can get those over under throws uh, going. He got into some bad habits this year, some, some pressure. He's drifting away, he did a little bit better job of getting his feet set. But I don't think I've seen anything from him. And I, I don't believe I've seen anything from him that would say, okay, this guy really needs a, a lot of time. There's some things to work on, some things to clean up. But again, another real mentally and physically tough kid. So if we don't take a quarterback there, you know, everybody's kind of considering, do they trade down? And it's, I think it's, a, you know, with the holes at tackle, at receiver, I mean, these classes are loaded at both those positions. Yeah. I think you trade down, though, it's just it's hard to see where they're picking 34. Those tackles are going to kind of go. It feels like, you know, even some of the receivers, I know that it's a deep class, but what do you see would maybe be a package that the Patriots would consider to trade down with? And, you know, would it make sense maybe for them to try to hit that tackle class near the top or, or some of those receivers? Well, there's a lot of different scenarios you can kick around. I mean, it, you don't have to potentially go that far. I mean, if you look at the Giants as a team that's been mentioned as a quarterback team, um, whoever their guy is, that could be something where if you're, you know, if you're the Patriots, you're like, you know, we really like four quarterbacks, but we also have these other needs that you mentioned. Um, if we were to go to six, there's a chance, you know, there's, there's a, uh, you know, there's a chance maybe the fourth quarterback is there. If not, you have to be comfortable with the fact of, okay, well, I'm going to get, you know, I might have a chance to get the best offensive tackle in the draft, or I can get one of the top two wide receivers in this draft. That's that, you know, that's an option while picking up all these other resources to fill some of these holes. So um, that would one that would be intriguing to me. I think everybody's mentioned the Vikings as a team that would, you know, love to move up. They acquire that second first round pick uh, from Houston to be able to go do that. So 11, you're going to miss out on top three wideouts. They're gone. You're going to probably miss out on the first two, maybe even three tackles. Um, so, yeah, that one I would – I mean, to me, it's stick and pick is the smartest thing to do. And if for some reason you are going to trade down, I don't know that I would want to go beyond six if I was New England. You mentioned four quarterbacks. J.J. McCarthy kind of, you know, getting a little buzz about him. Why do you think that is? Mm -hmm. what, what about him has is, is kind of made him rise here after, after the combine? Well, I think there's, you know, a lot of times we talk about guys rising. Guys haven't had a chance to do them yet. And I think he wasn't one of those name brand players that people assume would come out this year over last offseason. So if you're a decision maker uh, on a personnel side, you probably hadn't watched him uh, over the summer. And then you get into this year, you've got your whole host of candidates for quarterbacks where the assumption is he's probably going to go back to school. If you're, you're loosely following it, you're like, yeah, he's not posting really big numbers. Um, so he's maybe – you know, kind of hiding in plain sight on the number one team in the country. Um, but I think once the, the season ended, he declares, I think then people had a chance to go back through. It takes a while. Um, I was talking about this with somebody the other day. Just It takes a while to to get comfortable with him. It's like an acquired taste where, you know, you, you watch a game, you watch another game, like, okay, I don't know, has he done much here? Well, I saw a couple good throws. But then when you piece the whole thing together, specifically when you do the cut-ups, when you watch like all every third and seven-plus throw, and you're okay. These this is this is where you're facing challenging defenses that know you're going to throw the football. 
and you see him, he deals. He His third and seven reel is, is good or better than any quarterback in this draft class. So that's why I think it just took a little time. Uh, it wasn't just a, a cut and dry, easy evaluation. I mentioned kind of the three big needs, quarterback, tackle, wide receiver. It just seems hard to get all three. Uh, Patriots just signed K.J. Osborne. They, you know, they have some depth there. They got nine receivers on the roster. Yeah. I think what's really lacking is an outside threat. And I guess the question really is, if you don't get a receiver there in day one, A.D. Mitchell, those kind of guys late first, maybe that you'd have to trade back up for. Are there any fits you maybe see that could be that developmental outside guy that you could get in the second, third round, kind of moving forward? There's a ton of wideouts um, when you go through this draft. And I think it's been that way for really the last several drafts. It's just what the college game has given you. So, you know, you talk about a pick at, at 34, top of the second round. Um, you know, one of the guys who's, who's you know, got a lot of love around the league is Pearsall from Florida. Um, and he's somebody who could play inside, could play outside, could do a lot of different things there. Troy Franklin would give him a speed merchant on the outside there from Oregon who's a little lean um but he has a lot of juice a lot of explosiveness but i mean we could literally go through the entire every round of the draft and i can give you three names that are going to be there it's just there's a million of them so and that's one of the things that i'm struggling with forecasting this first top 10 is yes i have three receivers the top five players in this draft class and i'm sitting there going like gosh i wouldn't want to pass on one of these three guys but then i'm like yeah you could wait until the second third fourth round and there's still starting caliber players there whereas you know, tackles, even though it's a deep group, you know, historically here, they're gone. It, it, at the end of the first round, you're, you're, it's hard to find starting tackles. They're just not going to be there. So that's why, to me, that informs the decision a little bit. And you go, okay, maybe I have this receiver a little bit over this tackle or maybe a little bit over this, you know, edge rusher or receiver. When you look at the receivers with versus edge rushers and tackles, it's like, man, I can get receivers anywhere. Um, so that'll be fascinating. Just generally, what do, you, what do you feel like when we get into day three, late day two, day three? Wh where, where's the value there? Like, what are the position groups you feel like are, are have that depth that, I mean, you know, regardless of needs, just what are the what are the strongest positions there into day three? Yeah, I think there's corners. Um, I think it's a good group of day three corners. I also think the running backs are all going to get pushed down. Uh, we don't have a lot of separation there. You know, one team's top running back might be another team's eighth ranked running back. It's just there's a clump of them. So you don't see them go in the first round. There's a chance we potentially don't even see one go in the second round. And then now I think you see a run in the third, and then I think even to early on day three, that fourth, fifth round, I think there's a good number of backs, and that's kind of the sweet spot for them in this draft. So uh, corners, running backs, those would be the two to me. I think once you get in day three, I think you can get starters. So uh, last question one for you, just obviously turnover this year, major turnover at the coaching position. Alex Van Pelt coming mm -hmm. in as the offensive coordinator. Gerard Mayo, head coach, game plan, defense. They've always been pretty flexible on that side of the ball. Just overall, any fits that you see? I know the Patriots are evolving. We don't know for sure what they're going to do, but assuming they kind of stick yeah. generally, at least defensively, what we've seen from Van Pelt. Any guys out there that you think are kind of fit? From an offensive standpoint? Yeah, either, either side of the ball. Oh, yeah. Offense or defense? I mean, to me, I, I know that obviously Bill's not there, but I think defensively, I don't really see anything changing. I mean, they're, they're always, you know, I think that's ingrained in their culture and who they are. They're going to value, you know, smart, tough, versatile players. I think they're maybe trying to get a little, a little faster. Um, and to me, you can do that. Not only, you know, we think about the secondary, I think again, just linebackers, just get more speed, as much speed as you can get out there on the field. And then offensively, the identity to me is going to be about, okay, is, are we going to stick and pick? If it's the third guy uh, is going to be a quarterback, then to me, I think, you know, I think I, I like the fact of bringing Hunter back to me, I have a young quarterback. I want easy completions. So even though we would like a big, a big guy on the outside, a flyer, I think it would almost be more valuable just adding quickness and guys that can uncover and guys that can run after the catch and try and take some of that off of this guy who, you know, you've got a bridge quarterback in place, so he doesn't have to go out there week one, but I would imagine if they stick and pick, we're going to see that guy sooner than later. When someone accidentally threw away the school play costumes... Oh, no! Replacements were shipped with FedEx. And with picture proof of delivery, everyone could focus on the perfect opening night. FedEx, where now meets next. For residential delivery only. And now, great moments in... History. And yet, I was still nice enough to invite you along. Yes, it was very nice. Yes, oh, you were the third nice. wheel? You got our table No, there were like us? six of us. Oh. I mean, the place was packed. I was going to say, Fred was the you-know-what block. Why are you mad at me? What, why, why, he says with the big grin across his face. <laughs> why are you so upset you about You know what you did. This? I'm upset at you. Why? <laughs> 
Just yeah, you. just you. All of our lives are open book. Why is it yours? Yeah, why are you open special? Book? Oh, you purposely do these things. Yes, I do. I yes, I, yes, I, I do. He I purposely it. talk. We all talk about things going on. You make things out of thin air that are not there. What's thin air? You were with a lady friend. What's what's thin air about that? No, we're with a no, lady. a lady friend implies that there's something going on. And she wrote. That's the end of it. Did dude, look like a lady. But it doesn't have to be. It 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 is because I told you yesterday, and I don't like it when you make me repeat myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my father. Exactly. <laughs> you think I'm screwing things up for you? Just tell me. <laughs> no. You you've been screwing things up for me for 12 years, buddy. <laughs> Did you specifically tell him not to mention it? No. I knew he was going. As soon right, as he walked right, up right. and saw us, he had that stupid grin that he's got on his face right now. <laughs> I can so see it, too. I won't mention it again, but if, when something happens, could you let us know? Nothing what do you, what do you mean? is going to happen. You know, like if they hook, you know, if they decide to... Nothing is going to happen! <laughs> You oh, yeah. effing morons. I I'm going to go with Andy. Wait, why are you goes. yelling at me? I didn't do anything. It's because, him. Because you're joking around, too. You I know I him on a little. Yes, I, you do. I admit it, but this is all Fred. I, I don't, okay. What'd you guys eat? Did I miss that part? I had swordfish. That's another great moment from... Uh, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the New England Patriots. And if you're under, wondering what to do without game day weekends... Spruce up your home for festive spring bun God. Let's try this Let's again. Spruce up your home for festive spring br brunches with Bob's latest party-ready seasonal dining styles. Did they write this purposely to make it tough to read? Yeah, that's a challenge. Uh, whether you're looking for storage-packed seating, expandable options, or cozy coffee tables, be sure to shop Bob's Discount Furniture, the official furniture store of the New England Patriots, and I can promise you that shopping at Bob's is easier than reading this copy. So, uh, I like brunch though. Brunch is good. I love brunch. I know. Brunch is good. Big yeah. brunch. Guy. You get to choose. I am a yeah. big brunch guy. I agree. I'll do dinner well, too. Like you just guys a, have a Easter dinner? dinner. Uh no, no. It was our anniversary, so we oh, uh, we were in Boston. Nice. That's I, very nice. I ate too much. Yeah. Yeah. Did as, a brunch actually? Off in the case. Where'd you go? A brunch. Uh, nowhere great. Somewhere in Boston. And then we went to a museum. It was nice. I it's went up nice to day. the York Harbor Inn in York, Maine. Oh, they nice. had a big brunch. Oh, inns always have the brunches. Yeah. Like in Vermont, they always have yeah. really good brunches good. at inns. I had new heart. I had roast beef, <laughs> and then I had breakfast after. There you go, right? Like right. You just, it doesn't awesome. even matter. You like a little of this, a little of that, yeah. a little breakfast. But that's what the beauty of it is. Uh, Travis in West Virginia says, "Sorry if it seems like I'm coming out of left field, but every time I hear Evan's voice, I think of Jersey Mike's. I think the <laughs> I fact that they, Jersey Mike's, I so. think the fact that they slice Fast. their meat on the spot is completely inconsequential." Oh, I, I disagree. I think that's what. No, that's, but he's know. saying that yeah. it's oh Evan oh, is Evan better the, yeah. to promote. Jersey Mike's than the fact that they slice hey, better than me. Danny DeVito. That's I, for sure. I've been saying that the Bruins somehow got some of that Jersey Mike's money, and I don't, I don't know why, why I, we can't come this way on. Yeah, on I think PU. you know, I'm not gonna pump up Jersey Mike's because they don't pay me to. So well, there you go. I, I like, I like Jersey Mike's as my voice changes. I like think, um, I think <laughs> you know that turn. category might be open, yeah. and if you're someone that's uh, affiliated with Jersey Mike's and you're listening to the show and you want to become a sponsor. Picture this every day. We eat lunch in the middle of the show. We put a little platter on the middle. Yeah. Platter. platter. And uh, get a couple original 13s yeah. with, with Mike's Way right. sitting right there. Maybe we even get the meat. We'll cut the meat in here. We'll cut you know, that. Yeah. Do Peyton Manning and cut some meat. No, yeah. I don't need the meat in, no. you oh. know, in, in front of me like that whole thing. You don't, don't need kind of meat in front of you? I don't need it to be no. cut. You got in front no, of me. You're not plugging no. holes in No, anymore? that's not even my attraction to Jersey Mike's is no. that they do that. It's the I agree consistency. With the emailer. It's the consistency. It's just always it's good, good every time. I know exactly what I'm getting myself into. You get a bad roast beef every now and then when you get it's like, ooh, this is a little little bit of gristle. Yeah, that, 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 Jersey that. Not no, not that. not usually because they cut it themselves, but I think that's you know, when you go rogue and you try to make your own roast beef sandwich and you get not ideal roast beef and it's a little you know, you get some fat in there and like, I like consistency. So what if they have? I'm just. I'm, you've really, let's work. Let's let's spit all yeah, this you, a little you, bit. You've got me in. I'm in. Deeper. So what if you uh, go to Jersey Mike's and they cut a roast beef that's bad? Mm. I don't know. I might be. I, I would question the roast beef then from there on out. So it's not the fact that it's cut in front of you. It's the fact that you think it's a higher quality of meat. Perhaps. Well, but it if it's cut in front of you, it's fresher. Boar's head is the. You know, it hasn't good. been sitting around. Mm -hmm. You know. Right. But boar's head is very. It is boar's head. At Jersey Mike's. Oh, is that what they, no, they buy the boar's head? See, I like it. 
I, I like, uh, I don't necessarily need to have it cut in front of me. I assume it's not sitting around for like days. I don't like, know. Yeah, Subway but, it. But you be. are correct. Uh, I don't think that the, again, not a sponsor. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not sure what they serve as actual meat. Like, that's my problem. The tuna scares me. That, cause Subway. I, I, I eat Subway. Yeah. I do. I used to eat it all In the a time. Pinch. But then I, this Jersey Mike started to expand to this. Oh, here's region. a question for you. And people go, oh, talk about football. Oh, no, it's okay. no, no, no. When you were gone last week, we had a great <laughs> show. What's better? My Riz was up. <laughs> a cheeseburger or a patty melt? I don't know the difference. Patty, I mean, patty melts I, I are, are good, you're getting some onions with that patty melt. A good cheeseburger. A is patty better, melt is a, is basically a cheeseburger, but instead of being on a bun, it's on toast. bread. Yeah. Texas toast. Yeah, or yeah. It could be rye. Texas toast. Could be on rye, rye yeah. but it's sliced it can bread be very good. than it can be very good. It's I, I, I usually burger. I'll get one of those at um at Mel's Drive-in in L.A. They have those. Those are patty, patty melts. melts. Is that is what like when you're in L.A. Is that when in L.A. Doing? It's well, it's one of those like there was a few of them. But See, it's I, I can always sit in back. Sixties diner. I think sixties diner. I think yeah, patty melts. got it too. I saw the vibe. <laughs> yeah, I'll always choose a patty melt over a cheeseburger if it's on the menu. Because, really? Yeah. You Interesting. Get, it's you get more of the meat. You know, it's less bread. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a cheeseburger guy too. So you're looking for it to be a little bit less filling then? Well, I just want I want. The meat to be the dominant food. Okay. All right. Yeah. You, know. you get a lot of onions, though, sometimes. They usually, they kind of grill it in the onions. Sometimes yeah. they do. It's like like yeah. a smash burger. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah smash you know, burger the, the on, onions, on rye. Cheese. Oh, yeah. 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 You know that who works? had a fabulous patty melt, and I think where I had my first one was Friendly's. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Uh, R.I.P. Fact. R.I.P. That's a fact. Grilled cheeses. I mean, yeah. I do grilled cheeses. You get the patty melt with the crinkle fries in the fribble. Fribble. It's just so, you go. It's not so many upsetting to me that Friendly's yeah. is what it's, it's yeah. going no, right there. Freddie nailed it. There's yeah. still one here on Route 1 in Norwood that was yep. hopping. And we drove by yeah, it a couple like weeks ago. because it's like the only one. Yeah, I used to take the kids there a lot when they were young because it's just easy. You know, easy. like if they were like being loud or whatever, it wasn't, you know, you're Friendly's, yeah. you know. Pretty and nice there. I didn't, I didn't really venture out by myself with both of them a lot. <laughs> Friendlies was a place I was comfortable. I, I can handle this. <laughs> I can handle Friendlies. They're going to give me like crayons in the in the mat. I I got this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, phones are down. So that's why I haven't given out the phone number. But web radio at patriots dot com is the email address. <laughs> we're getting a whole new phone system uh, eventually. Yeah, we, we we people were writing in on Thursday about that, so we tried to lay. You know, it's, it, we're working on it because you have to move the phone numbers over, and uh, it takes time for that happen so we're working on it who am i blaming on this but on, on this on i think by the time the draft is over we'll have new phones oh. you <laughs> what here, here comes matt i'm blaming you finance okay. oh you know your, your ears department. only he said uh, i actually <laughs> talked about this on friday with my buddy <laughs> he knew nothing about it well, okay nothing uh bronson writes in i really like the idea of pairing tez walker with may my question is, do you think Walker will be there for our third pick, or will we have to trade up for him? I think he'll be there. Draft Knicks? Yeah, he had a rough senior bowl week. He's had, you know, he's one of those guys um, that doesn't have very many branches on the old route tree. You know, he's a vertical receiver, he run down the field, and uh, a lot of his film is just him running through off coverage and not a lot of press, not a lot of resistance and uh with the senior bowl he saw more press saw a more physical coverage and had trouble finishing through contact hey, uh, I, i'm not necessarily anti you know coupling as you uh you kids nice. like to say with yeah. your, uh, well your fantasy terms oh here we go again that's called but i don't think cuffing, i don't actually. think so that's you, a, yeah, netflix right. and chill and right. couple no, that's coupling different. That's a different. That's, oh, that's a different. Coupling is d very different that's from different. That's <laughs> very different. Oh, okay. what you're talking Cuffing? about. But I'm not. I'm not opposed to the the whole you know Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow. But I don't think it's anywhere near as valuable as people make it out to be. I think no. there's a lot of great quarterbacks that never threw the ball to their college teammates. True. It's fair dog. Like, uh, another Patrick Mahomes. I couldn't even tell you a guy he threw the ball to in college. Another note on everyone being so upset about our free agency and not spending all our money. I think we resigned some key players and swung for Ridley, and that's all we can ask for. People have to remember we have 28 players set to hit free agency next season, and I would prefer to resign some guys like obviously Barmore, hopefully Duggar, plus there is a ton of other guys I'd like to bring back. Mondre, David Andrews, Tavai, Peppers, Jonathan Jones, Godshaw. So we have a ton of guys to bring back next year, so I'm not mad we didn't go all out 
in this average free agency. Fair enough. What well, do you think is uh, going on with Duggar? Sorry, Paul. I didn't you can email in next year because the vast majority of your list I don't think will be back. Like yeah. Godcha, Jonathan Jones. Ramondre is an interesting one, too. Like, do you want to give the running back Ramondre's a second Ramondre's got contract? a shot because he's younger. But, I mean, 30-something-year-old secondary and, and defensive linemen and cornerbacks, I don't think you're going to get all those guys back. You might get one or two. but Do you think Duggar's plays this year under that tag? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it then? Yeah. Well, that would be my guess. I don't think he has very I think many if they choices. wanted him, they would have – yeah, they would have extended him. Barmore, I think, could get extended, like, like that. imminently. Be better, I'd like that. Um, Mike and Bill Ricca wanted to comment on Jaden Daniels and go on the record that he is going to be a bust. Oh, he is a one-read quarterback throwing to multiple first-round wide receiver talents who takes and takes sacks at obscene rates. I can't see him as anything other than Justin Fields 2.0. Am I crazy? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Give me May or trade down. I would even rather JJ over Daniels. My rankings, Caleb, Drake, Penix, JJ, then Daniels. I would just, you may, you brought up some good points. Uh, the sack, the pressure to sack rate for Jaden Daniels is one stat that the nerds like me look at in the draft process that's been pretty predictive in terms of the NFL is not good for Jaden Daniels. He's got one of the highest, when he's under pressure, he takes a sack at an extremely high rate. But the one thing I will disagree, the one read quarterback thing could not be further from the truth. Yeah, that guy can read the full field, go through progressions, get okay. to n- number two, three, check down, just as good as anybody else. So I would hold that as a more important trait than if he's not a one one uh, one read guy. Yeah, I disagree. I, I always think of guys that are very mobile like that as oft sacked. But you're telling me every time he's under pressure, he tends to. T- oh, well, it's, it's, not it's, literally it's, every no, time, but, but it's, it's a high, high rate. rate. So that high that rate. would that would concern me. Generally, guys that are very mobile get sacked That's a lot because they're yeah. always yeah. running around, and sometimes they get sacked. Yeah, interesting. You know, it's kind of counterintuitive that you'd think they'd be able to yeah. get Michael away. Michael Vick was a very high, you know, Russell very high Wilson. sack numbers. Yeah, hey, he does take a lot of sacks. There's, there's no doubt about that. But is that almost like could you break that down more into like sacked within structure and s- sacked outside of structure? Yes, you probably could. I that's something I would have to do by hand. So. Okay. Probably won't. But can but you do it by Thursday? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, sure. If we no draft problem. him, uh, Evan will have it by the Monday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. Right. But it, it's it's a, the sack. The, the reason why it's a fair concern is because if you look at the the lists of guys that weren't sacked a lot in college versus guys that were sacked a lot in college, the weren't the were sacked a lot in college in this pressure rate percentage that I'm talking about, the list is is not good. And they're basically the only good quarterback out of it is ironically Lamar, which is why everybody says, well, it means nothing because he plays like Lamar and Lamar did fine. So he'll be fine. And it's a mobile quarterback yeah. too. Uh, so I, I'd be curious what um, kind of number JJ McCarthy has in that. Cause I can't imagine JJ McCarthy spent much of his time under pressure. Right. Mm-hmm. Period. He had plenty of time. Um, I saw one stat that said that he um, had an absurd amount of time. Average time to throw was almost like three seconds. Um, I think it was like 2.95 seconds, something really high. Uh, so I'd be curious to see if his percentage under pressure, sacked under pressure, is high. If you look at a lot of these guys, these quarterbacks, except for maybe May in this last season, they all have a lot of time, you know. So I, it's yeah. it's just different in the pros. That's To me, that's well, the Caleb biggest Williams thing. Caleb Williams ran for his life the whole year. Yeah, that, that's the biggest thing is the speed of the game. You know, and it comes at you so much faster as a quarterback. Yeah. Now, I'll, part of that is Caleb on Caleb Williams, and I do think that one, my big knock on him is he's careless with the ball. Yeah, he, um, it's he, out here. He scrambles around with it in one hand a lot, and that's why he fumbles a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah like who's my who's my guy? Yeah, Josh Allen. He still does that. Yeah, uh, Joe and Richmond. Uh, this is I'm on the kickoff rule with the new kickoff return rules. It seems like running back types may be better suited than the traditional speedy return men that are on rosters. What do you think? I kind of agree with you. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I think it's going to be a lot more about <coughs> vision and burst than yeah. build-up speed. Breaking through a line, too, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you got to find a hole and hit it as opposed to you just got to run upfield as fast as you can and see if you can get Make catch one a cut and go, right. yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think that right now – all the special teams guys are thinking about this rule and how are they going to deal with it. You know? yeah. I mean, uh, I'm they, curious. They did make a, an alteration to the original proposal, and that touchback is to the 30, not the 35. Oh, okay. So 
I think you're going to still get plenty of touchbacks. Mm. So I got the numbers here for you. So pressure to sack rate, Jaden Daniels by far the highest at 24.5%. So this means when he's under pressure, he takes a sack on 24.5% of those dropbacks. Uh, J.J. McCarthy is 14.3%. And is that high or low? In the middle, oh. in the middle, but towards the lower end of the spectrum. Uh, Michael Penix is number one at 6.5%. And Bo Nix is 11.6%. Drake May is 18.9%. So Drake May is also on the higher end of the spectrum, too. I don't see Caleb on here. So, hmm. uh, Colum- uh, Let's see. Grant is in oh, Columbus, is. Ohio. Uh, I know I'm in the minority on this opinion, but I strongly feel the Patriots should draft the third and stock uh, trade the third and stockpile as many picks as they can to fill the numerous needs on the team. The team is not ready for their next franchise quarterback, and fans are kidding themselves if they think this team, as constructed now, has any chance of sniffing the playoffs. The QB position shouldn't be addressed until free agency or the draft next calendar year. If they do want to take a quarterback this year, they should focus on someone like Sam Hartman in the later <laughs> oh, rounds. Geez. Let's well, go hand- with Jacoby and handsome. see how things shake out. I guess I'll look good. I just I don't I care what I don't care what does I don't that mean ready. ready. What does that mean ready? Understand. What does that mean? If you l- I I I just don't understand this mentality. We have been we were so lucky to have Tom Brady for so long, right? It's hard to find a franchise quarterback in this league. If you think that one of these three guys couldn't be one, you better take him. Yep. You better take him. I don't care what the construction of the team looks like. I don't understand that mentality either, Fred. I wrote about it last week in the notebook. Um, This notion that all of a sudden came out of nowhere. Like, you can't take a rookie quarterback if you don't have the roster to support him. Like, I don't get it. I know everybody says it now. Uh, But I I would also counter that that email just by saying, so just because you don't think you're going to make the playoffs, why should you not take a quarterback? Like, why are those things mutually exclusive? Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. I think it. that's looking at it as a one-year snapshot versus looking at it as like exactly. And the draft isn't a one-year thing. So but why is it okay if you don't think you're going to make the playoffs to pick up a tackle, but it's not okay if you don't think you're going to make the playoffs to take a quarterback? I know it is just a frame of mind that never because they're crossed, so fragile. Never crossed my mind. But would you say quarterbacks is the most common position drafted first overall? Yes. And yeah. I mean, I know those all those teams were they all right. they were all ready no. for that quarterback. It's, no, but you got a chance at the yeah. guy. You got to get the guy. But so let's just say you're not ready and whatever. I think we can all agree that the team is probably not poised to make a run at the title. I don't think that's speaking no. ill of yeah. of no. the current uh, roster, but. This notion that you ruin these guys, like there's a litany of quarterback, like why do we automatically assume when Zach Wilson gets taken with the second overall pick, the Jets ruined him? Why can't it just be that he wasn't that good? You know, when Jared Goff went one overall to the Rams, one of the worst teams that I've seen. You're right. Right? One of the worst teams I've seen. He gets in the starting lineup, about halfway through the season, I don't know if you remember the game, Fred. You probably don't. Um, it's a knock. No, 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 because right it was though, no, it was enough. I, I know, I know nothing about the game, Fred. That, like I, I'm saying, because it was a, a meaning. A, um, I want to say maybe 2016 was that year that he came out. It was a meaningless, insignificant game among oh the back the bo- and forth. Among, Fred among the boring 12 and four seasons that we used right. to routinely <laughs> post. Thank you. Sick of those. And me. he just looked like a puppy in tall grass. Like he was so overmatched. He went 0-7 as a starter, I think, his rookie year. <gasps> they ruined him. Oh, except for they didn't ruin him. Like, he was pretty good, and as the team got better, he got a little bit better. And I'm not telling you he's Patrick Mahomes now, but he's fine. They didn't ruin him. Like, yeah. you don't have to take a guy who's going to fail right away, and that means you ruined him. Like, I understand that there's times where the team doesn't support the quarterback, like Mac Jones. Can we just stop putting it all on the team? Yeah, I, can I mean, we give these guys some of the responsibility for their own career, whether or not they succeed? 
Do you, do you think that some of this, though, is just kind of a reaction to what we've been kind of dealing with, specifically with the Patriots of the last couple of years? Yes. And, they, and, and the constant, <clears throat> well, even you know, Brady's last of, couple of years, right? About the not support. having the yeah. weapons, <laughs> not having, and, and you know, now the the protection has taken a, yeah. a, a bigger role in that. It just it feels a very specific Patriots thing to me because I don't think when you look at any of these national guys, none of them are like they're not ready yet. I mean, I, at least not that well, I can call it the top it. of my head. I, I oh, the, the Patriots aren't the ready. That, yeah. That's a total national thing. Yeah, yeah I hear it. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand it. Yeah. I'm with you. I just think that I don't it, get it. I think that if you, I get that it's lofty, but if you hit the draft out of the park, a lot can change about what you think of the team in six months from what we think about them now. Like if you go into the draft and you draft Jaden Daniels, and then you draft a receiver in the second round, and then attack, and like all of a sudden the receiver is also a star because it's a great receiver class, and now you have a star quarter, young quarterback, a star receiver. Sure. Now all of a sudden the offense looks a little bit better. I think the defense was already ready to compete last year. Like I just think that you you yeah. can't just look at it as like we're just adding the quarterback. No, right? no, and your outlook can change, but they're all still rookies. And it's unlikely that, you know, you're going to see that worst to first type of thing. You know, no, it's, but it, you don't have to go worst to first to feel like no, you're going to feel excitement. No, but you yeah. can feel totally differently about your personnel. Yeah. yeah. In, in, in six months. Now you go back to that email we had a few emails back about all the guys who are up next year. Like if you all of a sudden go out and you do what Evan said and you, you know, you mildly, you know, what's, what's you know. Let's say you had a mild hit. Like, it's not like C.J. Stroud, we just won 11 games and went to the playoffs, but, you know. But, like, you, you're pretty good right away. He's pretty good. He's showing the ability, and he's developing a rapport with some receiver who's pretty good. Maybe you take some of those guys that you, you know, well, maybe we don't need Jonathan Jones. Oh, you we're a little bit closer than we thought. Maybe Jonathan Jones would be a good, solid right. veteran cornerback to sort of lead that group back there. Let's get, let's get him back here on a one-year deal, pay a little bit more money than maybe we wanted to. Uh, to do that, that maybe if you don't have a quarterback and you lose all these pieces and then you're really starting over. Like, I, I hear what people are saying about the roster and the trade downs are intriguing when you see, oh, you could get three first round picks from Minnesota to this year. But I just I keep coming back to. So when are you going to and how are you going to address the quarterback? Because. I understand that there could be one quarterback that comes out of nowhere next year, but that's one guy. And if he goes 1-1 and you don't have the first overall pick, then we're right back into it. We're ready. That's we just thing. don't have the right Everybody pick. Everybody immediately hits back at you with, well, no one thought Jaden Daniels was going to be a top five pick, and no one thought Joe Burrow was going to be a, you know, heading into that season. Yeah, it, it happens. How many of them? You can't count on it. No, no, no. But I'm just saying, how many of those guys? Yeah. So let's just say there's a guy. Evan just said it. The guy comes out of nowhere, and he's the guy. What if you're not in position to pick the right, guy? Right. 1-1. One, one. Right. You know? It's, and let's face it. None of us wants to be in the position to take the guy. We don't want to be picking one again next year. I, I just get the sense that some people think that the Patriots can do whatever they want. They, they'll be able to get – if they don't get it this year, they'll be able to get a quarterback next year. There's 32 other teams trying to improve every year. And I would also – Looking at the same pool of players. And I, this is uh, totally anecdotal. I don't have all the numbers in front of me. You guys know that I have done this in the past. I just don't get the whole notion that it's way riskier to take the quarterback than anybody else. There's a, like a laundry list of guys that get overdrafted. Quarterbacks are high-profile guys, and a lot of quarterbacks bust because they get picked. And I'll grant you that quarterbacks are probably more frequent than the other spots, but there's a lot of guys that get overdrafted at the other spots too. And I don't know why, like, the, if, if your thought process is I'm going to take tackle wide receiver because they are safer, then you're wrong. Yeah, you're certain. wrong. They're not really safer. They're just quarterbacks get overdrafted. There's no doubt about it. But I don't think there's any safe pick to, to make. L from Otherwise, Was everybody would make it. Right. L from Wisconsin writes in, I have a non-draft related PFW argument topic. <laughs> What major sport do you think is the easiest to go undefeated in, and which is the hardest? Football is, has by far the fewest number of games, but I would think it is probably one of the harder ones. I don't know about that. I think it's probably one the, of the easier the ones. The big yeah. four sports, what's hard, the hardest to go undefeated yeah. in? Yeah, the one with the fewest games. It's football. Like, yeah. There's no it's, other option. Right. You can't, you're not going to go 82 and Now, if you in include basketball. NCAA basketball, you know, teams can go undefeated there. You know, you're playing 30 games or whatever, and – Oh, you know. NCAA. Yeah. 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 That yeah. happens. A lot of sports. I mean, it hasn't happened since 76, but it happens. You know, 
but you can't go 82 and 0 or 162 and 0. No. No. I mean, the Celtics went 41 and 1 at home. Yeah, I mean, that, basketball you know, but, would be the closest you could yeah. maybe make the but argument. But they still lost for, 20 games right, that year. Yeah. Right. The, yeah. And the Warriors, was it 73 and 9 or 72 and 10 yeah. or something like that? That's the best record of all time. Yeah. So they still lost nine games. It, it's, it's football. Yeah. Even though it doesn't happen a lot, it, it's still football. And it's it's and it's I mean I, what you like about bat I mean if basketball played a sixteen game season that would be it because it's five guys essentially that can you know yeah. kind of dominate oh, the game but oh, where absolutely. you have now it's like 20, you'd have it happen all the time you know, before it, it, football yeah. is such an injury laden sport and you know there's so many ups and downs from week to week they should shorten the basketball season that's a whole separate they should season. twelve games they should twelve short, games shorten every season I think I think the including football I think sixty five <laughs> is the She's right done. is the right number. For the NBA, 65, 60, 65, somewhere in there. Baseball, 140? 120. I don't need 140. Oh, like it even more. <laughs> yeah. Like the COVID year for baseball? Fan- 60. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Uh, Brandon in Maine, I can't listen live, but your podcast is by far the best and most entertaining of all Patriots coverage. I Agreed. Go. Let's go. I come to you now for help, particularly from that wannabe scout, Evan Lazar. Huh? I've been hoping for Drake May since around week five when it was clear how bad this team was going to be and that Mac was not long for the team. The more draft season has gone on, the more and more I have my heart set on May and the belief that he is exactly what we need. However, I am now convinced there is no way he makes it past Washington at two. I believe May is also the preference for all of you, but now I ask you for help. Convince me that when May is off the table, that Jaden Daniels is worthy of being our franchise quarterback. Can you get excited for this? Can you convince me and many others to get excited about this? Can he be the guy in New England? Evan, what do you see that leads you to believe he can succeed in the NFL? Uh, so I, I want to hear this, too, because so I'm kind of in the same role. So he wants right to want to be Scout's opinion on it now? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's why he went to you. <laughs> do you like watching Lamar Jackson play? Ooh, I like how he's starting off. Well. <laughs> Case closed. Okay, so you really think? I don't think he'll be. I I'm not saying he's that he's definitely going to be right, that. Right. But if you're telling me what's the upside and what's the like, how do you see him developing into the guy in the NFL? That's it. Yeah, it's Lamar Jackson. You know, Lamar Jackson. Uh, I, I you know, look, I think he plays a little bit more like an RG three than he does like a Lamar Jackson. But that's going back a ways for some people. So I I just would stick with Lamar. Okay, that's it. Lamar made it work. As really his legs being the the dominant force of his, his and you, game, it, so that's his upside. That's his oh, his absolutely. ceiling. Yep. And then it's Drake. Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Correct. Caleb Williams. Okay, Jaden Daniels. Uh, that's what Drake I was going to ask. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Now yeah. that's up like yeah ceiling. If yeah. they hit their ceilings, ceilings. right, right. Uh, Nate Chicago, how would you feel? If we traded back with the Vikings for 11-23 in a future first and walked away with J.C. Latham, Michael Penix, and Xavier Leggett after two days. It's not, very not, specific. Not very good. I <clears throat> feel okay about two-thirds of it. Yeah, Latham's a right tackle. So man, we run into the whole issue of Von Wenu and this whole thing going around right. and around. And again, who's going to play left? Um, but, you know, I, he's a good player. I, I would be a little bit lukewarm on it overall, though. Um, here's a keep-trade-cut game. Some are football, some aren't. Hmm. Uh, so best wa- running back, wide receiver, team duos of all time. So you can keep trade or cut topics. Uh, Calvin Johnson, Barry Sanders, that's one duo. Keep trade, cut? Yeah. They didn't play together. So who was it? He, s- he said best ru- uh, run. I'm not good at these. Yeah. I'm confused. They don't always okay, play so together. I'm not the only one. <laughs> He's just matching. I don't oh, know. I thought they meant like they no, actually played no, together. No, they, they can't have. So what's the first group? Calvin Johnson and Barry Sanders. That's one yeah. duo. Jerry Rice and Frank Gore is another duo. And Michael Irvin and Emmett Smith. But that's the only one that actually played together. I know. Yeah. I'd, go, I'd, I'd go with the first one. A. Yeah, yeah me too. I think A is the highest end talent. So you yep. keep yeah. them. Yep. Uh, oh, and I would. Uh, cut Frank Gore. Yeah. And yeah cut yeah. Frank Gore. Okay, no, I, I, I don't like this topic. <laughs> Fan traditions. Well, I would rank them one, two, three. Yeah. yeah. Like, I yeah. think the the Sanders Johnson duo is the most talented. I yeah. kind of agree with Evan. I like Frank Gore a lot. I think he's a pros pro. I think he's kind of a good. volume yeah. accumulator. Yeah. Uh, keep trade cut. These are fan traditions. 
The Bills Mafia tailgates, Cut. Lambo Leap, or the Terrible Towel. Ooh, jeez. This one's better. Yeah, yeah I like this one better. I'm gonna say the Terrible Towel will be the first one. Keep Lambo Leap will be the second one, and I agree with Evan. You can yeah. you can keep your take Bills take Mafia it up here. Yeah. tailgate. Yeah. I don't need to be lighting Bills myself on fire. Yeah, that's. Uh, keep trade cut, pin and pull. These are football phrases. Oh, pin good. Pin and pull, yeah. hook and ladder, run and gun. Oh, pin, oh. pin and pull all day, every I did day. Not know. Okay. Don't know what the run and gun is, but you mean the run and shoot? <laughs> well, it could be. <laughs> Some <laughs> people might call it the run and gun. No, no. you just you, you're all under. Nobody, center nobody ever called gun. it that. Run and no. gun is you more of know. a basketball. You don't know. Term. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a basketball term. It's yeah. true. He's right. Yeah. Evan's right run again. He's having a strong show again. Hook and want to be scout. <laughs> you want to be scout? <laughs> All right, keep Trey Just cut. Like calling him Cameron Williams. Keep yeah. Trey cut. These are sports TV shows. Oh. Friday Night Lights, Ted Lasso, or Blue Mountain State. Uh, Blue oh. Mountain State gets cut because that show is actually terrible. If you <laughs> watch Friday it. Night Lights is. By far one one Friday Night yeah. Lights okay. might be the best sports show of all time. Yeah. It's just so good. All right, the cast on that show. Uh, Rhode Island delicacies: oh. Dell's <laughs> lemonade, coffee, milk, or Narragansett beer. Cut Narragansett beer. Oh. Swill. Oh, swill. Oh. Swill. What else we got? They got a good. I would shandy, trade though. coffee, milk, shandy. and I would keep Dell's lemonade. Yeah, I like sure. Dell's. Oh lemonade. yeah, I'm yeah. with Freddie. Also, awesome. awesome. we're, we're a Bud Light show. So that <laughs> and finally, <laughs> Wonka candy. Uh, oh, no God. one's ever had. Yeah, it. not the real stuff. <laughs> Gobstoppers, <laughs> nerds, or Laffy Taffy. Oh, I mean, oh. nerds are by far the best. Yeah, cut Laffy Taffy. It sticks in your teeth. Agreed. I would go Gobstoppers over the nerds. No, but those are those are both excellent. Nerds, nerds rope. Also fantastic. Oh, yeah, they're yeah. all no, kinds no of options. No surprise that the scout likes nerds. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I, that's well, what's your flavor, that's though? too easy. A little strawberry and grape. Oh, I like uh, strawberry and grape. You nerds get the, like, the little box. Yeah, just, with the double. Yeah. My kids got them, and they couldn't figure out how to open it, and I felt like I failed it as a dad, like that you that's, can't, you know, like the little right. slide out. That's what convinced you failed it as a open. dad? <laughs> uh, Gary says, here is why people think it's best not to trade a quarterback this year. Okay. Uh, I'm not espousing this point of view, just explaining it. If you have a porous O-line, all the quarterback can develop is bad habits. We saw it happen with Mac Jones, so it's fresh in everybody's mind. Did okay. Joe Burrow develop how, bad how did that happen with Joe Burrow? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If the guy can play, he can play. Right. There's That's all I'm saying. Like we, it, we put everything on everything around the guy. Like, okay, maybe you said he didn't get his potential maximized because he had a p- poor offensive line. Or like, maybe David Carr just stunk. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or oh, maybe David Carr just stunk. He didn't yeah. have two elite wide receivers. Like, I mean, any team that's in position to draft these guys, they probably have some major problems on offense. And you just that doesn't mean you can, oh, well, we had a chance to draft Peyton Manning, but our line's kind of bad. So let's let's wait till next year, and then yeah. we'll have a chance. I, I, I could be totally wrong on this, and though this is probably a bigger discussion, but I am kind of getting the feeling that maybe they feel like they're better on the offensive line than everybody else does. No, oh, no, not that again. I, 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 I don't think, think there's any question that they feel like they're better top to bottom than everybody else. I does. don't know. I just feel like on the offensive line in particular, I feel like they think that they're going to be schematically a lot different, that their the quarterback isn't going to just be sitting in the pocket all the time and well, ask to throw. That's probably true, but I don't think they were asking Mac Jones to sit in the pocket for a long time. No, I'm, sure. I'm just saying. I think it just worked out that way. Right, but I, I'm also just saying, I guess – with the moving pockets, the bootlegs, the play action passes. Like I don't know if you're gonna they're gonna wanna be like a high sure. volume straight drop back team. Moving the pocket, I guess. Yeah. And then the other thing is is I, I think that they like the coaching. Like I think they think Peters and uh in A V P and these guys are gonna be able to coach it a little bit better that than what they think. That frightens me about the the overall talent level on on the offensive line. Like I'm not saying that it's they're not gonna take a tackle at all. No, I, no, I'm I just, know. I don't know if they're looking at tackle as as really in the conversation with the third overall pick. Like, Joe Alt is really in the conversation with that pick. Oof. I would doubt it. I agree. Uh, AJ, in the Bay Area, but from Providence, I'm tired of hearing about the Patriots not being ready for the quarterback and that Me kicking too. the can down the road makes sense. They were arguably the second-worst team in the league last season and still might have to settle for their third choice of quarterbacks. When are they going to be picking this high again? It's nonsense. Take the quarterback. There you go. Love it. All right. That's going to be it for this edition of Patriots Unfiltered. We'll be back tomorrow. Is there a draft show dropping? Uh, yeah, there will be another draft show dropping tomorrow, film review uh, of, of Drake May, so you'll want to tune in. Okay. We like him. All right. Talk to you on Thursday.
Thank you for downloading this podcast. Subscribe on Apple, Google Play, and everywhere else you listen. Like the show? Please rate and review us. Listener comments and ratings help keep us high in the podcast rankings so new listeners can find us. Be sure to check Patriots.com for more news and more podcasts. The world's original podcast.